What's happening? It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Sponsored by Fryette Amplification, New York Hardcore Comics, and now the Organic Grill. I hope everybody's well. We got a great show today. Super stoked. Yes, the Cola Brothers are coming on the show to celebrate their new book, along with their co-author, Howie Abrams. I hope everybody is well out there in these trying times. Because shit is still fucked up out there. It really is. Doesn't seem to be getting too much better right now. But fear not. Fear not, my friend. This show is going to be coming to you and bringing much relief to your world. Where we don't talk about politics and we just sort of escape all the bullshit and get into the, the tie that binds us all together. Music. And specifically... Hardcore music. So there you go. Um, let me see who's out there. What's going on? Adam Sachs, I need that Slayer biohazard poster behind you, Drew. Yo, that, that's, signed by all, that's signed by every single person in all three bands. It's yours for a price, bro. Anything in my life can be bought. Material possessions really mean nothing to me. So there you go. James Hollis, this friggin' show just keeps getting better. Well, thanks, bro. Listen, the reason the show gets better is because you support the show. So I want to thank everybody that's, that has supported the show, uh, my patrons, um, people that have contributed. It's your support is what makes the show really great. So, so there you go. Uh, Gregor, oi from Scotland. Oi, my brother. Oi, oi, my brother in Scotland. There you go. Cheers from Rio de Janeiro. Come on now, Paulo. If that's if you're Paulo, that must be Rio de Janeiro, right? Frankie, too far. What's happening, brother? Uh, Steve, psyched for, psyched for today's show. Yo, yeah, we're all psyched for today's show, Steve. We're, we're we're super excited. Jimmy Ferrari, of course. Sick of it all's on the show. Jimmy Ferrari. Hey, Jimmy, how about watching my show once in a while? Other than when fucking sick of it all's on my show, you know. Jesus, man. Um, not that there's anything bad, but watching the sh that watching the show and sick of it all is on it. But um, what else? Hi from France. Where did I see that? Hi. All right. Hope all's well in France. You know, Germany. Wow, they're all they're all checking in. Everybody's checking. Jerry Farley, of course. It's a sick of it all show. Where did I see that? Where did I see Jerry Farley? They're coming in fast. 
Of course, if it's a sick of it all show, Jerry Farley is going to get off his ass and watch the show. So, so there you go. Dave Goldberg, oi oi from Scranton. There you go. There you go. Good, good. Okay, let's keep it moving. Um, real quick, before we bring on Stephen Messina and uh, the picture of the day, uh, I want to... I want to... want to talk about a few upcoming shows. This Sunday... Get rid of these. Let me get rid of these banners. This Sunday, we have Matt Wildcard Henderson on the show. Agnostic Front Mad Ball, the eulogy blind approach. So we got Matt Henderson coming on this Sunday. Make sure you tune into that. Then after that, we have. We're super excited about this one. We have the Planet of the Apes show. That's right. Attention, all damn dirty apes. It's the Planet of the Apes show. Uh, we got Chris Mills from uh, Mucky Pup coming on. And uh, we're going to talk about the original Planet of the Apes series and how much we love those films. And we're going to get into all kinds of cool stuff uh, with those films. And then after that, we have Mr. Sandy Siegler who's basically played in about every friggin' band on the planet Earth. So Sammy's coming on, uh, Judge, Shelter, Civ, Youth of Today, et cetera, et cetera. Get your shoes and socks on, kids, it's right around the corner. And then we have the Hardcore Firing Squad show coming up with Tim Daly, Rich Zoller, and Steven Messina. Uh, these are our uh, hardcore photographers, our New York hardcore photographers. We're going to do a great show uh, with lots of photos and just, you know, really getting into the, uh, the psyche behind these photographers and all that, and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, that said, um, we see, yes, yes, Sam, for sure. Go eight. That's right. Everybody, everybody got to tune in. Good drummer. Sammy's the man. Yeah. Oh, May, you're stoked on these shows coming up. Good. I appreciate that. Um, what's this? Wow. I, I like it. join Drew's Patreon. Listen, it's not, thank you for the thank you for the intro. Let me talk real quick here before we bring on Stephen Messina about my Patreon page. My Patreon page, there's different tiers. Um, I'm releasing never before seen photos and footage. I just put some foot an excerpt, some footage, never before seen excerpt from my film that's on Netflix right now. Who the fuck is that guy? The fabulous journey of Michael Alago. I just put some footage on um, of me and Johnny Rotten, me and John Lydon, an excerpt from that interview from the film where me and him are talking about New York and CBGBs and Max's Kansas City. And, you know, he used to live, he used to live in New York in the early 80s. So this stuff didn't make the film. It's, uh, it's, on the, uh, it's being released. It's on now on my Patreon page. Come join. Come join the party. There's a $2 tier. You, know, you can see all this great footage for 2 bucks. A two dollar tier, a five dollar tier, um, ten dollar tier. We're doing uh, the Drew Stone cinematic uh, and film walking tour in New York. Uh, the next tier up, we're doing the New York Hardcore Chronicles. The next tier up, the next tier up, <laughs> we're doing the uh, New York Hardcore Chronicles 10 questions starring you. Go check out the Patreon page. Um, we're going to be releasing all kinds of unreleased stuff. Um, I'm getting into the Metallica interviews, the New York hardcore stuff. That's really the go-to spot. So really come join the party. Um, check it out. Patreon. Support this show. We would appreciate it. Um, what else we got? You saw that. Yo, you saw that Leiden footage I just put up there? It's, it's really, there you go. Lori Dawn. It's only $2 a month, you cheap bastards. There you go. Alex, love your show, Drew. Lots of love from Columbia. Hey, we love Columbia. It's always on in Columbia. Um, okay, enough, enough jive. Excited about today's show, I got to say. Really excited about today's show. Let me get this banner off. Let me get this banner off, and let's bring on Stephen Messina. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Where the hell is that banner? Aha! Aha! Aha. Let's bring on Steven Messina. What's up, brother? What's up? What's up? 
I'm in the box. How are you, man? Not too bad. I'm hanging in there. Are I, you on the clock? I, I was just laughing to myself. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm on the clock. Getting paid. Getting paid. Bro, bro you, you know, getting just, paid to do the show. That's cool. <laughs> you know what? Hardcore. Hard, who says you can't make a living playing hardcore? That's right. Yeah. That's right. The uh, I'm just laughing <laughs> to myself. I'm trying to trying to think between Sammy Siegler and Craig Ahead, uh, who played in more bands. Sammy Siegler, bro. Sammy Siegler is like, bro. I'm, he's yeah. You, I think he did, dude. I he, we, he's like in six bands right now, bro. He's in like it's it's like it's an on it's an ongoing thing, you know. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. So, it really is. But all uh, right, happy. Fourth of July to everybody. You know that was a great. We had a great time. That and uh, this. Is, I'm excited for today's episode. I don't know about anybody else, but uh, no, everybody's so excited. Big. Everybody's excited, ah, bro. It's sick of it all, man. You yeah, know, man. Ah, scratch this those is, surface. This yeah, is the music man. for these kind of days. You know. Yep. Yep. Hey, let's get it rolling here. Let's, let's get do on. It, yeah. Let's get on photo of the day. Now, uh, today's a little bit different. Uh, you, you sent this to me, and we talked about this a little bit. And there's a reason. There's a reason behind this. Uh, yep. Let me find that. Let me find. Here, let's talk about this. All right. Tell us a little bit about about what's happening. Well, this was uh, this is uh, in the mid '90s. I was at uh, I was at the, I was at St. Mark's Pizza, of all places. And uh, which I'm sure you remember, uh, St. Mark's Pizza was a place where you would go and have a piece of p a pizza while like they would be blasting, you know, Sepultura beneath the remains <laughs> at top volume <laughs> and nobody cared. And you just hang out and, and the, the pizza bar would come right to the edge of the door. And I was right on the corner of the, you know, of the, the corner of the table and up walked Iggy Pop. Just like, you know, just walking by, stopping, saying hello to everybody. And I was there with my brother. And, you know, I've never met Iggy Pop at that point. And I literally just said, hey, Iggy, how are you? And, hey, man, how are you? And, you know, what's going on? <laughs> this is crazy music playing and this and that. And he said, oh, I'm going next door to the Continental. Why don't you come over there? So I was like, I'm going to go hang out with Iggy Pop for a little bit. And, uh, and we walked over to Continental. And I remember he was with this big dude that at one point somebody bumped into Iggy and he, he looked at him and he didn't say anything, but I remember he reached back to get his wallet and, he, and I saw he had a gun on his belt. And I was like, okay, his, his, friend's, his friend is packing. And, uh, and I don't know if he was security or maybe he was an off-duty cop or something, but, but Iggy was so friendly. And for me, that was huge because this is – you know, to me, he's he's one of the absolute originators. And uh, as a matter of fact, the whole reason we're talking about this is because uh, yesterday was the 50th yeah. anniversary of Funhouse, which is, you know, TVI, loose. I mean, just 50, a crushing 50th, record. 50th anniversary. 50 years. 50 I'm going to be 50. Years. I'm, I'm going to be 52 this month. Jesus. So. He was Mother making Mary that and kind Joseph. of music, you know. I mean, Funhouse. I mean, t those re those records still sound amazing. And and I got to see Iggy over the years. Uh, he was one of those people that never did any. He always just gives you one hundred and fifty percent. And then I got to see the Stooges reunite, which was nuts. And uh, but that was the first time I met him once again years later. But but he was just so. He was just so fun and, and cool. And, and like, so you there it is. Him, you met him at St. Mark's oh, Pizza, shit. right? St. Mark's Pizza. There it is. There it is. You know what? You know, you know what I, uh, you know what I love about this, the St. Mark's Pizza. I love the dude in the wheelchair, like, <laughs> like pointing, like, hey, come on, would, oh, wheel, wheel me, wheel me, wheel me in there. That pizza yep. is fucking gangster. Oh know? my god. It, and I think it was open till like four a.m. or something. As yeah, I cool. No, listen, I don't. I, 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 got, going I, got, I have a um. I have a Saint Mark, a quick Saint Mark's pizza story. Let's hear it. A, a, a real, a real, a real, a real quick one. When I was when I when I was a juvenile delinquent. Yes, I know it's hard to believe, but 
at uh, one point. Uh, we used to come down from the Bronx and uh, and wreak havoc in the Lower East Side. You know, like when I was like, we used to go drink in a place on St. Mark's called um, the um, not the Green the Greenlands, the Grasslands. What the fuck was that place called? The Greenlands, the Grasslands. What? I'm not. It's right on St. Mark's between Second and Third. Um, why am I? Greenlands, grass. I can't. Jeez. And we were like 15 years old, and we used to come down That's at right, night. I think. Yeah, we used to come down at night, and um, we were we were troublemakers, man. And I remember one time we got into Grassroots Tavern. Thank uh, you, bro. Thank you, Todd. Todd from. Oh, Morrison. there you go. Right. Okay. Grassroots Tavern. Thank you. Which used to be we used to be able to drink in there when we were like 15 years old because nobody gave a fuck back then back then in New York. But one night we got into it like. Like me and some of my boys got into a scrap with the guys at St. Mark's Pizza, like a full on, like four on four, oh, like scrap. I don't know how it started. <laughs> Even you're 15 years old, you out in the city, getting you get into shit with everybody. We got into a scrap, five on five scrap with the dude. And they came out from behind a corner, and it was like it was on. Oh man, <laughs> did did you ever go back to St. Mark's Pizza after that? Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> 15 years old. Oh, that's anyway. Oh my god. Anyway, so yeah, that Iggy was... Pop, 50 years now. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a great. You know shot. what? Yep. I I think we could have posted the a live shot, but you know what? That was awesome, and it was just it was really cool to to you know. I mean, you meet people all the time trying to be cool, but Iggy Pop was like, he yep. was so. It's like I met him before, and he just was. I also remember that was the first time I realized how little he was. Yeah, you know he's he's not a, he's 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 a, he's a he's a skinny chick. I mean, a skinny dude, you know. <laughs> so, but was, uh, you listen, know, he's my, he's always my, he's always really approachable. I mean, I've talked to him a couple of times, but wow. hey, we're gonna keep it moving, bro. I'll see you towards the end you of the got show. It. You got it. And happy yeah. birthday, Sid. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's Sid the kid's birthday. We got to bring Sid the kid on, like, even though he's not supposed to come on today. We got to bring Sid the kid on. It's his fucking birthday. Um, so, so there you go. Rap bones. I don't know where rap bones is. I'll talk to you in a bit. He's hunting toys. Yeah. Yeah. I'll talk to you a bit. Yo, I don't know where rap bones is. Um, he hasn't responded. So I don't know. It's very unlike rap bones to go AWOL. <laughs> so, so there you go. It's the New York hardcore Chronicles live sponsored by Fryette amplification, New York hardcore comics and the organic grill. The Organic Grill is a vegan restaurant located in the East Village of New York City at 123 First Avenue. Featured in New York Magazine, the New York Times, and Veg News, their dishes have won numerous awards, including Best Veggie Burger. They make their own cheeses, sausages, burger patties, and every dish on the menu can be made gluten-free. For all you gluten-free motherfuckers. This year, they are celebrating their 20th anniversary, and they are all about, they're all about it. They are all about having a great time while enjoying amazing, clean food. After three months of being closed, they are now open for deliveries. Get in touch with them and order some great food at www.theorganicgrill.com. Also, while we're at it, while, while, while we're cracking right here, while we're, while we're crack-a-lacking, New York Hardcore Comics, one of our other fantastic sponsors that support this show. Do you support this show? New York Hardcore... New York Hardcore, New York Hardcore Comics, New York Hardcore Comics, opened back in 2013 when lifelong friends Debo Order Pro and Lee Fairley combined their collections and obsessions for comic books, punk rock, toys, statues, magic, The Gathering, and all things horror. The store is located at 117 Main Street in lovely Dobbs Ferry, New York. If you want to support them during this pandemic, please contact them by email at newyorkhardcorecomics at gmail.com or any social media channel. For an exclusive store package, twenty dollars gets you one of each exclusive shop T-shirt and sticker. Marvel Comics Venom Number One, exclusive to New York Hardcore Comics. That said, let's keep it rolling. Let me just make sure we're all good here. What's happening down there? Rap Bones will show. Yeah, I don't know where Rap Bones is. It's it's very uncharacteristic of him to miss out on an opportunity to uh, get his face on the show. So let's just, let's, yeah, Rap Bones will descend on you. Let's just hope he's okay. You know, Rap Bones lives on, Rap Bones lives on the edge, you know. Hi, Gina, how you doing? Chiming in real quick. Happy birthday, Sid. Can't stay on va on vacation up in Mass. Okay, Gina. Well, thanks for stopping by and saying hi. 
we 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 appreciate it and and we hope you're well. Um yes, he could be anywhere. Absolutely. He could be anywhere. Right, exactly. So all right. Detroit is here. All right, good. Detroit's in the house. That said, let's keep it moving. Let me get let me let me get uh, oh, here we go. Let me let me let me change the banner a little bit. Let me let me get something a little more appropriate up here. How about the New York Hardcore logo? So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, our first guest is a New York native who has been a fixture in the city's music and entertainment scene since the early 1980s, having held creative positions at companies such as Ineffect Records, which he co-founded in 1988. He worked with Bad Brain, Scatterbrain, Nuclear Assault, and 24-7 Spies. He did time at Roadrunner Records, Jive Records, Zamba Music Publishing, and Warner Music Group. As an author... He's created the Merciless Book of Metal Lists, Misfits Summer Camp, 20 Years on the Road with the Vans Work Tour, Finding Joseph I, an Oral History of HR from Bad Brains, Hip Hop Alphabet, Hip Hop Alphabet 2, and the ABCs of Metallica. Please welcome, representing Queens, New York, a diehard New York Mets fan, and my neighbor who lives up the block, please welcome Mr. Howie Abrams. Drew, <laughs> what's happening, just buddy? From your apartment, we could have done this together. Yeah, right. <laughs> How are you, man? Good. How about yourself? I'm good, man. Listen, I'm blessed. I, I'm, I'm blessed. I, I'm, I got it good right now. I'm doing something I love doing, and I get to do it with my friends like you. So I look forward to it. It should be a fun one. It's great. It's great. So before we, before we bring on the Kohler brothers. The um, Kohler brothers. Yeah, the Kohler brothers. <laughs> um, let, let's just a little bit on you for a second. Um, yeah. you know, your background, uh, you know, music's always been in your life. I mean, let, let's keep it uh, on the recent, you know, how did you get involved with the book thing and, and, and the publishing thing? Yeah. I mean, I always, uh, I always wrote a little bit on the side, but I never took it seriously or cert I certainly never thought it would turn into a fucking career. Um, but you know, after the music business stuff kind of crumbled around 2008, um, it was sort of reinvention time. It was something where I found myself with what the fuck am I going to do now? Um, and I had this idea for this wacky metal lists book, you know, of, you know, metal fans, hardcore fans too, but definitely metal fans love to argue. We love the fucking minutia of the music and mm -hmm. who's the best at this. Who's the worst at that <laughs> who's the worst album cover. Who's the worst guitarist that's overrated all that shit. So I had this concept and um, I hit up my friend, Sasha Jenkins, who you've had on the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a real author and I picked his brain a little bit about how to put a proposal together and try to pitch a book to publishers and all this shit. So he helped me with that. And we wound up doing the book together because he had ego trip before that. And he had done a book called the book of rap lists, which was a very similar book to this idea. And I was like, well, who better to, to, to get some info from? So he introduced me to his agent and we put a proposal together and unbeknownst to me, uh, this guy got us a deal in three weeks um, wow. to put out that book. And ironically, it was a, a company called Abrams. Um, so everybody wanted to know <laughs> um, if it was like my family's company or some shit, I wish. Um, but, you know, from there, it just kind of, you know, it started to go in a direction where I was looking for opportunities to do more. And then later on, I helped start a publishing company and then that crumbled. And But now I'm working with the same editor that was there. And he's at a new publisher and I've done my last, uh, I've done six books with him. Um, so the Kohler brothers book is my sixth book with, uh, my editor, Jacob. So shout out to Jacob at uh, post Hill press. And, and we'll talk a little bit, um, when the fellows come on, I mean, you go way back with these guys, right? Yeah. I mean, I signed them to in effect, but, um, right. you know, that was in it. We signed them, I think in 88 and the record came out in 89, but, I went to their first show in 86 at the right track in and we had a million mutual friends. Like we basically met through Danny Lilker because Danny, once, once again, Danny Lilker, the connection to everybody and everything. No, Danny um, Lilker, Danny Lilker is like the, the, the unsung hero of New York hardcore. And 
we love he comes on the show. He's been on the show a couple times. He, he's yeah. he's always he's always down to come on the show, even just to like sit and just hang out. He, he's the greatest. Yeah, if he's not at work, he's down. Yeah. And <laughs> you know, and it's like he's a connection for us too, right? So it's like, yeah. you know, uh, but but yeah, so you know, he was really close with Craig Satari's older brother, uh, Scott. And so yeah. that's how I met Craig. Right. And then I just remember, and we, I even mentioned this in the book that uh, I used to be on like the E or the F train from 179th street and, um, and Hillside Avenue to take the train into Manhattan to go to shows or go record shopping, whatever. And I used to see these guys on the train, like they would get on later and flushing. And, you know, in, in those these days, guys, like, like, right. So, like, the, you know, like, the, like, like, like then, back then, like when they get on the train, it's like, yeah, exactly. Because you're like, I know that you know that we know that we're all going to the same place, right? Right. You know, like you with the venom jacket and the really long hair and the up inverted cross, Armand. And you know, it was it was those guys. And I was like, you know, we're obviously going to the same place, but we never talked. And then eventually, <laughs> we yeah, met. Those, we those, met brothers, those brothers, brothers were kind of weird back then. Like they were very sort of standoffish. But think, but think of the crew, right? It was the two of them. Yeah, you had Armand. You had right. Rob, who uh, rest in peace is Rob Helmet, yeah. you know, who's sort of uh, scary looking. Well, the, and it was like you know, like eight or ten of them, a couple of girls too, and really? like yeah, girls a couple of them. Those, girls hung out with those guys. It's, it's scary to believe, but it's true. Wow, we're gonna ask uh, them about that. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, th th yeah, like there was May, and then they like girls too. There was a couple, wow. and and so you know, one. fast forward, I meet them through Danny, right. and then. Fast forward a little bit more, I wind up with In Effect Records and I'm like, uh, you guys want to make a record? And so that's how that relationship started. And, you know, there's people you just, you know, you bond with and, and connect with better than others. And they happen to be a couple of those guys who I just have always really loved being around and loved talking to. And then loving their band is just a bonus, you know? Absolutely. That said, um, let's, get, uh, let's get the show on the road. Um, here we go. Dun, dun, dun. Intro music, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> for these two Flushing Queens natives, hardcore has become a lifestyle as well as an unlikely career. From the moment these siblings began applying their abilities to punk's angrier, grimier subgenre, they quickly became 50% of one of the most intense and compelling quartets to ever claim the, mo claim the movement, the legendary New York hardcore band Sick of It All. A quartet. I like that. You guys were a quartet, like a barbershop quartet. You're like a hardcore quartet. They are proof positive. I, I like this part of this a lot. They are proof positive that you don't need to have lived a street life or come from a fractured, chaotic home in order to produce world-class hardcore. The new book, The Blood and the Sweat, is a no holds barred autobiography of two brothers who have never wavered, as well as an unrelenting depiction of the American dream and the drive and determination required to live it, regardless of whatever obstacles appear before you. Please welcome Queens, New York represent Pete and Lou Kohler. What's hey. happening? What's up? How are you? <laughs> wow. What an intro. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, bro. Listen, I do my homework for these things, man. You know, I take this thing. That's, that's why my people support me. Like, do your fucking homework, dude. You know? <laughs> So, so congrats, <laughs> welcome, and thanks for coming on the show. And um, let's talk a little bit about the book. I, I got notes and stuff. L let, let's start. Let's start with this, um, Pete. Let, Pete, let me start with you. You know, why a book now? Why, why is it book time? Well, it kind of uh, like you said in the intro, we're not from a broken family. We're not from the streets, but we excelled in this music. And I would say 90% of the people into hardcore, they're not from the streets, they're not from broken families, and they wanted to hear, you know, our story. And it's, to me, the story is about loving music, all kinds of music, you know, and it, how it makes you feel. You're having a shitty day, it makes it feel better. You're doing a shitty job working in the sun, pulling weeds or doing some shit like that, you put music on, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, and 
the book, to me, it was so much fun talking to Lou and Howie on the phone, <laughs> you know, because we just reminisce and it was just like we were laughing and then we go <laughs> off onto like, you know, political tangents and then we go off on, you know, the fucking dog is doing this, you know, and it was just a lot of fun putting it together. So, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I got a copy of it and, and uh, did as much reading as I could. Uh, before the show, we don't want to specifically talk too much about the book because we want people to check it out. And let, let me, we got a nice banner here um, for the show. Uh, there it is, running at the bottom. Um, the book is the book is out now, right? Um, right, Howie? It's actually out August fourth, but um, there's a lot of places that have it up for pre-order. And Generation Records in New York is the only place that is actually shipping books already. And what's cool is if you order it from Generation, you get a Zoom code, and I'm going to do uh, a Q&A with Pete and Lou on August 4th, the day the book comes out. Um, and the only way you can get in on that Q&A is if you get the book from Generation. But um, Cortex in Germany's got the book. Amazon's got the book. Barnes & Noble's got the book. Revelation Records now has the book. And um, I know uh, New York Hardcore Comics was ordering the book. I don't know if they have it yet, but it sounds like you can get it from them too. But you can get it any one of these places, but Generation is the only place you get that Zoom code. Here's uh, our friend John Pinto chiming in. Just got the book yesterday, and I'm already up to page 120. Great reads so far. Awesome <laughs> job to Pete and Lou for telling their epic journey so far. So I get. I guess wait, – wait, here's another one. Jason Weber. They shipped it, and I finished it already. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That that's awesome. Man. It's, it only takes about two dumps to get through the book. Yeah, right. It's, 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 I, listen, you know, some people could read sh shit and read. I can't. I I, I can't. I can't do two things at the same time. You know. Oh, you know what? I want to take this opportunity. Uh, let's shout out our friends in Cortex in in, in Berlin, man. They're, yeah, they're yeah. Super super. Yeah. Focused, right. So uh, we love Cortex and, and yeah, Berlin is Berlin. I mean, I, I'm, we're going to go all over the place here, but but let, let me throw this at you, Lou. I mean, we're, we're going all over the place, but Berlin has always been a real stronghold for you guys, right? Yeah, yeah. It was the first place we ever played in Europe. It was amazing. You know, uh, I don't know why they just connected with us. That's that's usually that's yeah. Berlin is Berlin solid. I, I screened the New York Hardcore Chronicles film there. Uh, and, and, and it was awesome. So let's, um, let me kick a few things. So, um, Lou, you were on the show before and we sort of kicked it, but uh, you know, we might go over a couple of things. We might overlap a little bit, but so I got a couple of questions here. Um, you guys, you, you, for Lou, your, your older brother is really, uh, one of your older brothers is really the first one that sort of brought hardcore into your orbit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Our older brother Matt, he uh, he brought home, uh, you know, New Hope for the Wretched uh, and other albums like that. He really turned us on to, you know, New York hardcore. Uh, uh, well, it turned us on to hardcore and punk, you know. And you guys didn't? Did I read a thing in the book where he he like went to Gildersleeves and saw AF and yeah. and GBH and all that. He oh, saw yeah. that and saw who else? Anti Noah yeah. League, all that stuff. He's when the Anti Noah League. Yeah. Yeah. There. So he's uh, he's your older brother. Yep. How old is he? How many? Yep. Years? And you you guys are a year apart, right? Yeah, and we have two older brothers yeah. each a year apart from each other. Was there was there ever any? Yeah. So I I'm I'm thirty one. Lose thirty two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was was there any other thought of having any of your other brothers involved in the band? Nah, they were on their own thing. It was like me and Pete, and it was uh, Steve and Matt, our two older brothers. You know. So there's four brothers. Yeah. Got it. Got it. I yeah. think the um, Matos have us beat by one. I'm not sure. <laughs> you know. You know, Peter. I, I got a question for you, man. Like, what? Yeah. Why did you gravitate to guitar? How did you end up being the guitar player? I, I really don't know. It just seemed like the thing to do. I saw Vinny Stigma, and uh, <laughs> I was like, wow, this guy, he's a great entertainer. He's not the best guitar player, 
so maybe I could do it too. And it inspired me because even now I'm not a good guitar player, <laughs> but I'm a really good entertainer. <laughs> good. That, that, no, fantastic. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, that, that's, that's right. And, and listen, your band, you, your band is great and we love you. And I think you guys in a lot of ways are a testament to the sort of concept, which I've said many times on the show is different people bring different things to the party and that's what makes the whole. And you guys together as yep. a group, you know, it works really well, you know, and you, and you're pretty fucking entertaining, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so there you go. Um, I like uh, what one thing in the book that made me. Hey, by the way, yeah, th th there's an Iggy Pop story in the book. Yeah. It's, a, it's really short, but there's an Iggy Pop story in the book. Okay. So you have to. Can't tell out. you. You got to buy the book, though. <laughs> You're right. <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, you know, leafing through the book, I love there, there's, there's, there's a great list of 80 songs Queen Guido's <laughs> loved. I love that. Like the list of, yeah, of, yeah. Of, of 80 songs that Queen's Guido's loved. And I so, <laughs> what's that? It was Lizette Menendez on there? Because she was one of my favorites. She's on there. Yeah. Is it? Of, of course. Drew, you, know you, you know what happened with that? <laughs> what? They kept talking about how in their early teenage days that everything was inspired by hating Guido's and Queen's. So they were like, <laughs> we hate them, we hate their music, we hate like fucking everything about them, their attitude. So I'm like, you know, people outside of New York may not get the Guido concept. So yeah. if we're shitting on their music, we need to tell people what that music was. <laughs> so, we, so we made this list, and it's just ridiculous. <laughs> I love I love that someone just posted <laughs> when when you mentioned when you mentioned the um uh what's his name from from uh Iggy Pop somebody uh somebody said uh did you meet him at St. Mark's Pizza too? <laughs> That's good. I miss St. Mark's Pizza. That was good pizza. Yeah, it was good pizza. Yeah, it was great, man. St. Mark's St. Mark's Pizza uh it, it's fantastic. But I mean, you guys, you guys grew up in a sort of Italian Guido-ish neighborhood. Is that correct? Yeah, Queen, it was Queens, Flushing Queens, Bayside. Yeah, that's Queens was like that. Yeah, Irish, Italian, you know, Guido, you know. <laughs> yeah, and and, <laughs> and one, one thing you mentioned is how um, anything that was slightly different from the norm. It was problematic back oh, then, yeah. right? Lou? Oh yeah, yeah. Even even if you were just skating, they hated you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, skateboarding. I can't tell you how many times we got stuff thrown at us from cars, and we were skateboarding down the street. Like, get off the road, you you freaks! You know, just it's crazy. Skateboard. So th that's th that's when we invented the fight rock. <laughs> so if you were skating around, you would find a rock on the ground and always keep it with you. So when the Guidos drove by. Hey, you fucking freaks! You just throw the rock at their uh, Z twenty eight, and if it scratches the car, they'll fucking freak out. Right. So, <laughs> Wait, this fight was, rock. I don't think this is in the book, but there was a, a Halloween once where we were walking around, and you know, in New York, you know, the eggs and shit and cream, and all these guys, uh, bigger, older kids, came and attacked us, um, and were throwing eggs and and stuff. So we started throwing them back, but they were in a car, and when we hit the car. The guys going. That's my mom's car. Don't hit the car. Like, <laughs> me. I'm like 13. Yeah, I, I, I remember th those days where the Guidos, you, you, you'd be walking down the street and you get yelled like, you know, hey, you know, fucking Devo, hey, Devo. And you'd be like, <laughs> now, I'll, I'll never forget that. Like, hey, you know, fucking B-52s. Like, ouch. Ow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for, for sure. Um, you know, if you buy the book from Generation, you actually get a fight rock that comes with it. <laughs> you, you remember those? We used to have rock fights when we were kids, right? Oh. <laughs> right? Rock fight. Let's have firework, firework fights. Fight. Firework <laughs> fights. Yeah. We still do that. Yeah. <laughs> Roman candle wars and shit. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, 
Remember I mean, blockbusters and M80s? Oh they don't make God. those things anymore. Yeah, no, no, they, they do. Remember, yeah. there was all like if you buy four of them, you a stick of dynamite. Yeah. <laughs> was that right? And it was a quarter of a stick of dynamite? <laughs> they said the four of them was a stick of dynamite. Four M80s. Yeah, yeah it was a quarter stick of dynamite. <laughs> right, right, whatever it was. Well, yeah. Yeah. What is the dynamite? And I remember, you know, we'd always have a friend that like was coming up from the south and like stopped at like south of the border. We would show up in New York with like a trunk, a yeah. trunk full. Of, and it would be like, oh, yeah. yeah, you would get the list. Yeah, yeah you get the list. Get the list. You, you get the list. Yep, yep. Um, <laughs> oh, here you go. You can get M80s from China. Not sure about customs, though. <laughs> Listen, we're getting all kinds of shit from China these days, not just M80s, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Pete, you, Pete, you mentioned in the book um, about how punk rock started in Queens. And, uh, you know, Queens is such a hotbed of, of activity, not just punk rock, but it turns out in, in New York hardcore, so many fucking bands and you know so much hardcore in new york has come out of queens why do you think that's the case i just think because more kids live there not too many people really lived in manhattan you know what i mean yeah. you know and we all traveled into the city you know it was really fun like when we were how old were we? when we started going down to 42nd street to hang out 12 13 13 14 we get on the seven train like yeah you know but uh it was something different and there was a lot more people like us aside from the guidos right. you know looking for something different or someone getting picked on you know and the first time we went to cb's everybody was actually really cool and nice you know it was the first time we saw uh billy psycho that was the first time i saw somebody with a tattoo <laughs> on their head you know what I mean? And it was like, holy shit, look at these fucking guys. They look crazy. And uh, it really turned us on to it, too. And then the, in the book, I think we talk about when Vinny comes up to us at the Victim and Pain record release show. He was like, oh, you guys, come on in. It's great. You guys came down like, like we were friends forever. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's it, it, was, it was like you didn't really have friends in high school. You didn't have friends in the neighborhood. But. At CBs, you did. Yeah, so. I mean that's one of the enduring qualities of Vinny Stigma, which he he will forever be remembered for. Even you know when I came around in in 1981, it was the same Vinny Stigma who just made you feel like welcome and that you have a friend here, and yeah. you know don't worry, you're not gonna get killed. I'm your friend here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I, I love the long hair. Well, you yeah. had long, you had well, long, had hair, long back hair back then, back right? Then, right? Yeah, but yeah, you, well, you, had... you, you did in the beginning, right, Lou? You, you were like, you were like a, a long hair dude, oh, right? Yeah. We all did. We all came. Armand had the longest hair out of all of us. But wow, yeah, well, I... you got to I... tell you, you got to get the Armand and Craig book going so we can get all the photos of that. <laughs> I can't imagine Armand with long hair like that's. It was like down to the <laughs> right above his belt, you know. <laughs> right above his belt. He his, looked like Rick right above the, his right above his bullet belt. <laughs> yeah, bullet belt. That's true. That's that. Yo, that's, when we met Armand in high school, it was he was walking down the hallways. He has super long hair and a giant upside down cross. And we we're like, whoa, this guy's cool. <laughs> <laughs> like an upside a cross, but upside down. Like big big state. Big state back then you know <laughs> yeah 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 he got he got yeah. jumped for wearing it remember he got he got out of out of out of battle of the bands at, a, at some church right because he had not played down cross and the uh holy warrior <laughs> the teenage holy warriors who are who are you know smoking weed and drinking before the show they're so into god they had to beat him up yeah. or try wow. to beat him up <laughs> Our, our yeah, we 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 call we call those church. guys the Christian Freedom Fighters. That's what it, that was the nickname we came. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> came with a good feel. Oh my God! I remember that fight. Oh my God! Yeah, I realized when I was on the ground that not more than four of them could kick me at once. So yeah, you know, the the rest of them were just all making noise. 
<laughs> there was only enough, there was only enough room for four guys to kick me around. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That, 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 that's great, man. Um, so uh, let, let me ask you, let me ask you guys, um, and, and Pete, what was uh, like what? So you got into the, the, the we talked about stigma a little bit, but like when when you two guys first were like showing up down there, who were the bands that like you saw that really influenced you, and you were like, wow, I we can do this type of thing, Pete? Well, when when we started going to shows. It was, you know, AF, the Cro-Mags, Bad Brains, all that stuff. But even before that, GBH, you know, Discharge, uh, One Way System, stuff like that. That Good one. That's how I was like, wow, I could learn how to make a bar chord. <laughs> and then I could write my own songs. I, I wasn't, I didn't have the ear to listen to like a song and play it. But then I learned to make the bar chord and I wrote friends like you and then I wrote my life. So that's how I actually started playing instead of, you know, let me sit down and practice and I'll get all this stuff down and know where uh, a G chord is. I don't even know where a G chord is now. Craig has to be like, yeah, it's the, uh, it's the second dot. Okay. I have to go to so, the dot. So, but so really, so you were always a proficient songwriter, huh? Yeah, that's how I remember way before the band, my parents bought me an acoustic guitar and they bought me a book and it was the Roy Clark big notebook. And you were supposed to take the stickers from the book and put it on the, the neck of the guitar. But to me, that was like learning, which is like school, which I hated school. So I was like, fuck this. I'm not going to learn how to play guitar. But then when I started going to shows or even listening to, you know, plasmatics or even even before that, Black Sabbath, all that stuff, it's like, wow, it has such a heavy sound. It's so like such a powerful thing. And then I just, you know, got my two fingers to stay in place for long enough to move it from note to note. And then, you know, that's why most of the first album, everything is starts off of the E chord because I knew how to make it E. <laughs> In two different spots, so <laughs> it's like you, you guys are like you guys are like the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. <laughs> like it's like you you sort of organic, no, you, seriously, you guys organically sort of you know through osmosis created you know what you are, and and that that's awesome. You didn't you you know you didn't follow a, you know certain you know kind of path. I mean, and apparently, I mean, you guys didn't come from a musical family, right, Lou? Nah, no. I mean, our nah. brother Matt could play guitar, but that was about it. You know, my parents didn't, they loved music. They had played music all the time, you know. Uh, for some reason, my mom plays a lot of French music, you know, uh, people that she loved and, and country music too. But my dad was all, you know, the 50s, 60s, rock and roll and Motown and all that stuff. But that's all, they, they played it on the record player. They didn't actually play it. Yeah. So mu but there music was always music playing, you know, like we go on vacations and there would always be an eight track, you know, playing yeah, in the alive. car or CBS FM or something like that. You know, I remember yeah, I mean, I'm in live eight track. I mean, listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm born in Queens and, and, and how are you, you can attest to this too, that it was such a very vibrant time musically to be in New York city. You know, and, and the radio, it was like really the, the glory days of, of of FM radio in New York yeah. City with all the stations. Right, Howie? Yeah, well, there yeah, was. Yeah. And, yeah. The, and the time that they're talking about, too, there was other things going on, like, you know, the real beginnings of the expo not the beginning of hip hop, but the exposure of hip hop, mm -hmm. because the radio would start to have like the two hour Friday night show, um, you know, with. Um, Red Alert, you know, and Chuck Chill Out, like those types of guys on WBLS, you'd have two hours of, of hip hop. And there weren't a lot of rap records yet, but there's a, a point in the book where the guys are talking about like hanging out in the alleyway when they were teenagers and they would listen to like, you know, some English punk record and then also listen to like, you know, Curtis Blow or something exactly. like that. 
And that all of that being a New Yorker was around you. And that's, you know, like we probably have some uh, guilty pleasure fucking, you know, freestyle Guido records that we liked, even though we talk shit about it. But like it was part of being a New Yorker. You know, you were surrounded by Latin music, all this stuff. But hip hop really penetrated at that time for kids because it was rebellious music, you know. And so you had metal and you had punk and hardcore and then you heard hip hop and those kids had some shit to say and the beats were kind of hard and kind of angry and and it kind of became a part of you also. Yeah, it's inter it's interesting because in retrospect now, a lot of that stuff I, has aged really well. The stuff that I hated back then, I hear it now and it just brings me back to like that place, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's exactly. kind of, you yeah, know, yeah, it, yeah. it's kind of great, man. It's music is music is like that. It's like I said, it's it's the ties that uh, that that buy us to get, bind us together. You know, um, Pete, um, quoting you um, in the book here, you say when it came to music, I would always follow what Lou did. I guess as a as a year uh, younger yeah. brother, that was the case, huh? <laughs> well, like I said, he always found the the new stuff and the best stuff and he somehow he always had money to buy records and I never had money. <laughs> so that's why I would follow him. I had a paper yeah. route. He would <laughs> I had a paper route. <laughs> Is that it, Lou? You had a paper route, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's what he did back then. And then I got a paper route when I was twelve, so Yeah, I got squeezed <laughs> out by, you know, the old guy who said, I can deliver your whole route what these twelve kids do in my station wagon in less time. So you lost out to that guy. Oh. oh, oh, that guy. I remember that guy in the station wagon. Yeah. I remember that guy. <laughs> Yo, fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. <laughs> fuck that guy. Stealing yeah. jobs from kids. Yeah, like the creepy dude in the in like in, in his like in the station wagon. Yeah, like, and it was always too low to the ground because yeah, 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 no, no shock. <laughs> so I got it. I got it. I hope the people outside of New York understand that. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I totally. <laughs> <laughs> totally got it. Um, and listen, we're going to skip around, but we're going to have some fun. Um, let me just say that everybody out there, we're going to we're going to kick it around a little bit, and then we're going to we're going to open it up for some questions later. So hold off, and and then uh, you know you, you can pummel us with some questions in a little bit. Uh, one one thing one thing that I read in the book that I, that I enjoyed um, is uh, you talked about going to Lemoore's to see Motorhead, and. Uh, you guys, you guys loved Motorhead, right? Motorhead oh, yeah. was huge, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Look at that thing. Of course. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and was, that, was, that, was, that was another perfect day. Tell us about that. Yeah, the, that was the, the, the tour. We went to every show they did, at least the, three of the shows they did in the New York area. Lemoore's, Lemoore's East, and the Calderon Concert Hall, I think, in Long Island. Because I said the flyer, it's got the, the rods opened up on yeah. that yeah, it was the Calderon yeah. in Hempstead. Yep. Yeah. Remember, Pete? We took that long ass train yeah, ride. Yeah. We, hung out, we hung out. We met them after the show, and they were cool. Like, Filthy came out and signed our, uh, signed a, a record that I had. So did Robbo. Lemmy came out and just hung out with us for like, you know, any a half hour to an hour. Meanwhile, everybody else is on the bus partying. And he's just talking to a bunch of kids, <laughs> you know, and he was cool as shit. He made fun of us, and he laughed with us, and then he said, thanks for coming out. It was great. I love that Motorhead record. That's the one with uh, Brian Robertson from yeah. Thin Lizzy. That's my favorite Motorhead record. Another Great perfect record. day. Great record. We were talking about it earlier. Good record. That intro was the coolest record. He did pitch black stage, and all you would see was Lemmy's white boots, his bass, and his glow of his cigarette. And then he would flick the cigarette and go right into uh, uh, Back at the Funny Farm. What a, what a tour. <laughs> Great. Absolutely, absolutely. See, mu music makes you feel cool. Him, even him just saying that it brought me back, and I felt so cool when that happened. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, it's like uh, we, it's like when growing up in Queens, and and you know, we're we're from the same generation. It's like music was so important and had such identity to us. It was like you know, what are you, man? Are you like, are you like a disco? Or are you like a yeah. rocker? Yeah, like, are you like, rock like or disco? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You had to be something. You had to be Rock something. Number one. <laughs> Rock number battle, one. Lines were, the battle lines were drawn. Remember on the school desk, it'd be like Rock number one crossed out, and it'd be Disco Rules. It'd be Rock number one. <laughs> Rock number one. 
<laughs> I think we're gonna put that on the next sick of it all shirt <laughs> on the back one day. Rock number one. Rock equals rock. No, rock equals number one. <laughs> That's great, man. We have the kid that would write "Rock is the best." Also. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I wrote Kiss is the best once in one of my books. <laughs> and I made it look like little lights. Oh, like nice. little, little lights. <laughs> when I, had hey, this, uh, I had a crappy warehouse job. This guy in Magic Mark on one of the shows wrote, I saw. I went to see Eric Clampton last night and I saw God. So under it, I wrote, I went to see Venom last night and I saw Satan. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Hey, uh, hey, Pete, tell us about how the name of the band came about. Well, we had, this is way, way back. None of us can play or anything like that. So we had a drummer. His name was David Lam. He was an Asian. He was Chinese, I think. I, I'm not exactly sure. But he was part of the, the alleyway crew. And he wanted to, he was like, okay, you play guitar, you play drums. For a while, Lou was playing bass. Oh. Just yeah. you know, messing around, Wait, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> He had this really cool destroyer bass. This oh, shit yeah. was tough. That was, that was but tough. <laughs> I wish I still anyway, had. so David, David kind of had sort of a an Asian uh, flair to his speaking, and he says, "Okay, let's call the band Sick of All." And we're like, "Sick of All." So why don't you know? Why don't we? No, no, it's it's not. You're just sick of of it all. You're sick of everything. So we're sick of all. And we're like, eh, I'm not really sure about that. So then we actually just decided to, to make it sick of it all. He also wanted it because it had the uh, the initials SOA. And I was like, there's already an SOA. You can't. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they were pretty banging, too. Yeah. Um, here's, here's, a, here's a little question from our friend May, um, who we all know and love. What happened to the destroyer base, Lou? <laughs> I think I gave it away to somebody decades later. It was just like, here, like, was, here, man. You want this? <laughs> I was like, hey, will you take it? Oh. Oh, <laughs> I think man. I bought it for a hundred bucks, and it was like a Japanese knockoff. Yeah, it was, it was a Hondo. Oh, a Hondo. It was a Hondo destroyer. Yeah, my first, first, first guitar was a Hondo Flying V. All right. So then, but when I got into punk rock, I spray painted it black. And wrote General Chaos across it because <laughs> that was going to be the name of Sick of It All years before. It became sick. Chaos and K, though. <laughs> I just laughed so hard, I almost fainted, you know, because just the, the word, just Hondo, just brought back a flood. Like, yeah. Everybody had that that first instrument. Yo, what kind so of a, cheap. a Hondo? <laughs> oh, it was man. one of the window of everything. I actually before. think. Yeah, exactly. I actually think our friend Devil still has that flying V. I think he still has it. Wow. Because I, I gave it to him. Yeah, <laughs> I think he still has it. Oh, my God. That, that's that's, that's yeah. fucking funny. Um, moving right along, <laughs> uh, keeping it moving and grooving and, and, and trying to ask the smart – trying to ask the interesting, funny questions here. Um, hey, listen, you don't have to answer this, but I'm going to post it real quick. Don't answer this. Don't answer this away. Hold on. When are you guys going to write a song about Amores? Okay. Yeah. There's, there's no answer to that. Um, Hondos were garbage. No, bro, you're wrong. <laughs> you're so wrong. You just don't know. Any guitar you can afford is not garbage. Right. Hey, you, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know um, where's that other one? Hondo. Here. All the Hondo comments are coming. Hondo 2, Les Paul here, made of chipboard. Listen. <laughs> yo. <laughs> Yo, now, just real quick on this subject. I remember talking to the Sepultura guys back in the day, and they were telling me that when they started, they had homemade instruments. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah, that's bunk. Yeah, that's something that's, Lifeblood never did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> homemade homemade instruments. You got to You got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. All right. So let me let me put this this photo up and let's talk about this, okay? Let's talk uh -oh. a little bit about this here. Boom. Let's talk about this right here. Oh, the the first flyer. Yeah. Um, you want to take the lead, Lou? Tell us a little bit about this. 
Craig, Craig and Tommy from Straight Ahead were playing in Youth of Today also. And Craig goes, we got this show on Long Island. We need you guys. Why don't you guys open up? Because we've been, what, playing for practicing like a month together, Pete? Like sick of it all? Yeah, something like that. So we had uh, this guy, Mark McNeely, playing bass, Dave Lamb on drums. And we were like, we're not ready. We're not ready. He goes, I'm putting you on the flyer anyway. If you're not ready now, you're never going to be ready. <laughs> so that was our first show. <laughs> Um, and that was where is this? Oh, at the this is the infamous right track in right show, track right? In. Yeah, the first, yeah, yeah. our we, first we, and we, second shows were there. Yeah, right. Wow, any memories of this? Pete, the first show, first time getting on stage, anything resonate all these years later? Yeah, I remember. I was, I was, I was super, super nervous. I was scared, yeah, like really, nervous. but but like getting there, you know, like when uh, didn't we borrow Steve's car? Something like that. So, or Steve, our oldest brother, drove us there. I, I'm not really oh, sure. Devil. But, oh, yeah, we were all in Devil's car. And uh, I was so nervous. I had this tiny little lamp, and I put it in the car, and I was like, my hands. I wasn't even near the place yet. But then <laughs> when we got there, and all it was, you know, the alleyway crew was standing in, in the audience. Everyone else was outside or whatever. So it, it, it turned into fun, you know. And then when people started dancing, it that was it. I wasn't nervous or anything because it was like you felt it, you know, flowing out of you, you know. I think Craig drew that flyer. Is it? Is yeah, it, Craig did draw that flyer. Is that right? That's a Craig. Craig. Craig, Craig, Craig or Tommy or Craig and Tommy drew it. I don't remember who. Yo, so, somebody, somebody, uh, Chris Bunkley posted trial by fire. You were like youth of today, straight ahead, crippled, uh, crippled youth. You, you, you were right. You were thrown right in there in the mix, man. Yeah. You know. I remember, yeah, people, yeah. you know, yeah, like, yeah. like Pete said, the alleyway guys and all our friends, they liked it. They sang, what not really sang along, but uh, the smart thing is we learned uh, the Cause for Alarm cover where they sing that youth of yep. planning this. Uh, yeah. Right on. That's where, we, that's where we won the audience over and we did that. <laughs> so so you guys initially started, you were a Long Island, you play, you, you exclusively played Long Island shows, huh? <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah yeah two times <laughs> I, was the uh the first yeah <laughs> show the tv show was uh what was it i know stillborn was on it but i can't remember who else was on it the second show no this is no, the uh, first cbgb show we ever oh right on. yeah i just remember stillborn of wanting us to open and then i forget who else was on the bill they go nah sick of it all has to go on it second <laughs> Yeah. Um, let me, so let's, let me get rid of that. You know, I'm really into, you know, my, uh, what do I want to, okay. I got some other really, I got some other ones. Okay. So yeah. How about this? This, we, we might, I know we're skipping around, but I like putting the photos up and it sort of, it sort of instigates the conversation, but Let's take. Let's talk about this now. Let, let me make an observation before we get into it. Like, uh, being the historian that I am, uh, this obviously is Don Fury Studios under the sidewalk in New York City, right? Yeah. Yep. Tell yeah. us, a, a Pete. Tell us a little bit about what's happening here. Is that the we stand alone? Well, this is one we recorded. Yeah, well, this one we recorded. We stand alone with uh, Ek and Eddie. We're in the band. Oh, oh, okay, I thought and, this was uh, than that no this is what when we did you see that shirt i'm wearing i wore that shirt for like Every seven show. years i think playing shows <laughs> yeah yeah look, if, you, look, if look. you look at the photo yeah. shoot for the, this record i'm wearing that shirt yeah <laughs> yeah look 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 a hey, uh luke the tucked in shirt is a that's, look buddy that's the 90s oh. that's why i knew it was we stand alone for my <laughs> Also, <laughs> here's our friend John Bello, uh, Guidos. <laughs> well, that was kind of our rebellion against the hypocrisy of our punk friends who, you know, if you didn't look punk, you weren't punk, you know? Right. So right. So we were just guys from Queens. The regular guy look, you might say. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know, why um, not, right? <laughs> Fantastic. So, uh, but you guys were proficient right off the bat, and it didn't take you long before you recorded that the first demo, right? Yeah, I mean, we had what 
we got like what was it, Pete? Six songs on the first demo. Do you know Howie? I don't remember. Yeah, something like that. I don't remember how much, but that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. But the, you guys weren't even around. You were only around a couple months before you went in and recorded a demo, right? Pretty much. Once we got the solid, uh, we got Richie on bass because right after the first show, the bass player uh, quit, got kicked out. Dave quit. And then we started uh, hanging around. We got Richie to play bass, and we asked Armand if he could fit uh, fill in on drums while we wrote songs. And that's how it started. And then we went out and did the demo. Hey, um, Pete, got we, used to, we used to go to some some records was the first place to buy it. The de the demo. Oh yeah, yeah. With Dwayne, Pete, Dwayne and some records. Hey, Pete, this one's for you from our friend Ben H. What guitar was that? Jeez, I. Uh, back then, which strangely, I was already sponsored by Gibson and this is when they were first started pushing Epiphones. Okay. So that was some kind of Epiphone they gave me. It was a real piece of shit. <laughs> so when it was stolen in, <laughs> so when it was stolen in somewhere in Pennsylvania, I actually didn't care at all. It wasn't, it wasn't your typical Epiphone piece of shit. This was a real piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. They were like, yeah, try this one. I was like, well, do you have any that look like an SG? Well, we'll try this shape. I said, yeah, whatever. Uh, and, you know, I, of course, switched the pickups to make it sound good, but whatever. Here's one for you. But like I said, it was. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, like I said, it. I don't have it anymore. It was stolen like a few months later at some show. Uh, Lou, this one's for no you. biggie. What what kind of gel did you use, Lou? Oh, back then, I don't know. <laughs> it was either a Murphy Queen Helene, either Murphy no, Queen or, Helene or L.A. Looks. <laughs> <laughs> L.A. Looks. All right. How he knows. Cheap. Hey, here you go. Do me, do me a favor. Steal my Epiphone. <laughs> 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 oh boy cool hey uh hang on a second will you let me let me shout out the sponsors and, and we'll pick it right back up all right sure. here we go Hold yeah. on. let me drink some water yeah go ahead hey gang how you doing hope you're having fun this is the new york hardcore chronicles live sponsored by Fryette amplification new york hardcore comics and the organic grill Fryette Amplification is a small company that makes guitar amps, attenuators, and direct recording products in North Hollywood, California. The gear is used by the Deftones, Helmet, Candiria, Stone Temple Pilots, Powerflow, Antidote, Volbeat. I like Volbeat these days. Downset and many other heavy bands. The brand new Deliverance Two Heads are now available at Fryette.com. That said, I want to announce uh, a new show that's coming up one of our uh uh i'm gonna make this announcement right here right now coming up here comes a new show everybody mr Derek green of sepultura sepultura where is that sepultura it was fucking keeler Derek green from sepultura is coming on the show Sunday, July 19th, 2020, we got the big bopper, the big boy, Derek Green, coming on the show. Uh, looking forward to that. I go way back with this guy. What some people may not know is that Derek Green, who sings for Sepultura for the past bunch of years, has a bit of a, a history in New York hardcore, and we're going to talk about that. He played Coney Island High, and he was in a band with Sammy Siegler, and so this is going to be cool. We're looking forward to having our old friend Derek Green on the show. That said, I also want to one more time throw up, throw up. Oh, I want to throw up my Patreon banner and talk about support is what makes this show happen. If you can, please support the show. Go check out the Patreon page. Just see what's on there. Go check it out. Check it out. I'm releasing all kinds of never before seen footage. Uh, I just put some um, excerpts from my film that's on Netflix now. Uh, who the fuck is that guy? The Fabulous Journey of Michael Lago. I just put 
some never before seen excerpts of me and Johnny Rotten uh, from an interview that I did with him where he's talking about CBGBs and um, uh, Max's Kansas City and New York back in the day and the Roxy Roller Rink and Africa Bombada. That's all on my Patreon page. I'm going to be releasing a whole bunch of other stuff. That's really the conduit to the show. We also do private shows that are only available to be seen on the Patreon page. Go check it out. There's lots of cool shit on there. Don't be scared. Can't live your life. You can't live your life scared. And wear a mask while you're at it, fucker. Um, yes, his old band is on that comp, New York's Hardest too. Yes, Derek Green. Th that's right. Uh, I saw Derek at a gig in Camden many years ago. He stopped me in the crowd to commend me on my sick of it all shirt. Well, how about that? You know? Um, yes, Derek was big into hardcore wetlands. Yeah, man. Yo, Derek Green's a good dude. We're going to have a great show. We're going to have a great show with him. Um, yes, super nice dude. Um, you know, ab absolutely. Um, oh, get a better sound, you fucking bums. Listen, Fryette Amplification, time to ramp up your Mickey Mouse guitar sound. Have mercy on my soul out there. Me, we're out there in the crowd, and we have to listen to your Cracker Jack guitar sound. For Christ's sake, ramp up your game. Fryette Amplification, it's for you. Um, that's it. Yes, that's it. Thank you. He used to sing for Outface. That, that is right. Thank you. There, there you go. He used to sing for Outface. There's the Patreon page. Also, for those that might be um, not, might not be able to handle the statistical density of Patreon page and would like to make a contribution to the show via PayPal. There it is. It's stone4124 at AOL. Yes, I got that email address at the dawn, at the dawn of the, of the internet. But yeah, that's the Patreon page. Don't be scared. Go check it out. It's your support is what makes these shows happen. Seriously. Uh, that said, let me get rid of... Uh, let me get rid of Derek and everything else that we've already, we already did this. We did the apes. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, we're doing it all. Let me see. I want to get. I want to get. I want to get another sick of it all picture lined up. This is really basically like. This is like. This is like this. This is like the sick of it all comedy show going on here. So, um, this is this is going to be fun. Uh, let me get. Let me get these. Let me get these off. Get off. Get off. Get off of me. Excuse me while I get off. Uh, that said, um, yeah, we got the ape show coming up. Go ape. Um, yeah, there's a good one. Or do both and hit PayPal when you're super impressed by a specific episode. Uh, absolutely. Um, where is, you know, I got a video that I want to play here. Um, I guess let, let me get them. Let me get them back on here. So um, that said, I think I've covered everything, right? Um, yeah, we're good. Let's bring on uh, co-author Howie Abrams, Lou Kohler, and Pete Kohler. What's happening, fellas? What's up? You, you did a good uh, Max Cavallara uh, yeah. impression there for a second. Oh, good. You, know, you know what that's from? It was like years ago I was talking to him, and he was like, it was Keeler. And I'm like, what the, huh? <laughs> it was Keeler. And I'm like, what the fuck is he? Oh, it was killer. Ah, <laughs> got it. It was killer. Shout out to Igor, who's in the book. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Hey, let, let's, let's, um, Howie, uh, at first, when I, when I first uh, perused the book, I, I thought it was really, the, it was really just Pete, the voices of Pete and Lou, but there are a couple other voices that chime in uh, in the book. Tell us who else uh, is sort of, uh, we hear, whose voice we also hear in the book. Not so many. Yeah, I mean, we didn't we didn't really have like a plan for other voices, but as we kept talking, you know, things would come up and people's names would come up, so we would uh, reach out to them. So you know, we always knew that we wanted to have, um, you know, parents and wives, and you know, we got one of the brothers. One was a little camera shy, so uh, you know, we got that. But then, you know, for instance, um, their first you know, kind of quote unquote tour was with Exodus. So we said, let's reach out to, to Gary Holt. 
and we got Gary Holt. And then they went out and did the entire country with TRI. So we reached out to Kurt Brecht. And then there was the uh, New Titans on the Block tour with Sepultura, Napalm Death, and Sacred Reich. So um, I spoke to Igor Cavallera, spoke to uh, Barney from Napalm Death. Um, who else did we talk to? Um, who yeah, else? EK. Oh. Yeah, yeah. EK. Yeah, I, I read, I read, I read, I read EK's, I read EK's stuff in the book. It was, it was pretty heartfelt, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was He's a good guy. Thing. He's a good guy. He seems to be doing well now, which is great. And you know, we wanted to make sure he got to speak for himself a little bit. You know, yeah. no, that, that was that was really awesome. You know, because uh, you know, sometimes in these books, you know, you never sort of hear another angle of it, and it was really refreshing that that e, that EK sort of you know, had the opportunity to, to kind of give his take on it. And I, I know that was sort of a, I mean, in retrospect now, it was sort of an odd time and sick of it all history. Yeah. Because it was really you two guys and, you know, a different drummer and a different bass player. It was, you know, EK playing drums and Eddie Cohen playing bass. And I, you mentioned in the book, Pete, and, and you could expound on it, how you know, uh, I think, I believe it was you. If not, it was, it, it was your brother, but, um, about how you guys, there was no thought of you guys, uh, a thought of stopping. You were just, you just had to carry on, right? Yeah. 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 No, you, you can't. Music is in me. And obviously Lou, I hear music all the time. I got to write it. I have to perform it. And because Armand and Richie, like Richie left, Armand was going to try to do the job thing for a while. And it was like, well, we don't want to stop. And it was fun, you know, playing shows. And then we got the AF tour and uh, EK and Eddie, they were with us on that. And uh, yeah, like I said, you can't really, we don't want to stop for, you know, because those guys don't want to play. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and we did everything we could do to keep playing. Yeah. And the I best mean, thing is... The, the the name of that chapter in the book is the asshole brothers. So you gotta. <laughs> yeah, I, was gonna, I was just gonna add that you know, at that time we weren't a huge band at, at, by any means, but we uh, we just kept loving it, and it would be we'd do the shows and then go home and go right back to our jobs. We would do the weekend shows, even with uh, Richie and Armand in the band. We would leave our jobs on a Friday night, pack up the van, drive, do the show play shows all weekend, end up Sunday night, Monday morning, dropping off all the equipment that me and Pete, who didn't have licenses at the time, would drive the van yeah. back to the rental place and then walk home and go to work two hours later. We did that for years. Well, I, I, think, would, I would rent the van, and I didn't even have a driver's license or insurance. Wow. For some reason, they thought I was, they thought I was my brother Steve. <laughs> Wow. Steve rented the van for us once, and all of his uh, all of his uh, info was down on the thing. So I would just go there and get the van. It was great. Yeah, sure. Okay, Steve. All right, Steve. Uh, we'll see you Monday. All right, cool. But yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and we would even drive. <laughs> Remember that that drive? It was from like Massachusetts to Toronto on that AF tour, or something crazy Oof. like that. Oof. And it was freezing. Oof. And I drove almost all the way, and I didn't even have a driver's license. <laughs> it was <laughs> after playing, too. <laughs> oh, I barely ever drove before that. And I was like, all right, I, I guess I could keep it going straight. Trial by fire. <laughs> yeah. Keep going straight. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think uh, somebody, uh, but, our friend US70, UGHC, who, by the way, I have to, give, I have to shout him out. Uh, created that New York hardcore logo that I, that I fly every now and then. Um, he really says blue collar working class hardcore, and and I really think that you guys are sort of, you know absolutely absolutely growing up in the environment you did with your dad and your brothers, uh, you just had a really good uh, work ethic, and yeah. you know yes, you just, that's you, exactly what it was. Yeah, e even joking around about driving, we had to get there, no matter what. We had to get to the show because we said we're going to be there. You know, and at that point, being on tour, it's our job, and we didn't want to disappoint. So no matter what, we're going to get there. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, here you go, Happy Jack. Poor Steve. <laughs> Poor Steve. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that, that's even worse. Steve, Steve came on that DRI tour as our driver and road manager in the van. And he did not approve of our antics at all. <laughs> he did not approve. He didn't, he didn't take it. Cause we're just, we're just like kids. <laughs> oh yeah. He didn't take one cent. He was, how long was that tour? Uh, like two months or some shit. It was like 38 shows something or something. crazy. Well, listen. Yeah, it was insane. You know, I mean, just to throw this in the mix a little bit, um, you two, you two brothers. I mean, you guys never really, never really, as far as I know, you guys. Uh, you, I mean, and I know you're you're pretty proud, but you guys have never been side. You two personally have never been sidetracked by drugs or alcohol. That's never really come into. Uh, that's never really derailed your vision for the band. Fortunately, no. we did all that no. stuff before the band started. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see, it was more fun when it was illegal. So when right. we became legal agents, like, yeah, who gives a shit? You know, I already did it. Yeah, but a lot of a lot of people, and I could and, and I, I could attest to that to a certain extent. People start bands and people get in the bands because they want to party and they want to, you know, and it, it turns into a big rolling party and then it kind of turns dark. And I, I've, I've never associated sick of it all with drinking or drugging, which is great. It's a good thing. Nah, I mean, we, you know, everybody does what they want to do in the band, but it's uh, we've all just always kept the band going. That's that was the most important thing to all four of us. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Let me. Um, let me let's. Uh, what? Yeah. We. Okay. You know what? I want. I want. It, we're we're going to jump around here, but okay. um, I, I want to do this. Um, First, I want to say an, a, a, another reason that I think that you guys, you guys really are, are kind of uh, have the the the, the uh, I don't say where you're, where you're at is you guys have good management, and and I got to shout out your manager who's who uh, I think you know does a really good job with you guys. I know I know he's uh, any manager can be a little bit of a pain in the ass or or <laughs> especially one from another country. Well, they are, but yeah, yeah, but you know you guys, I, I must say, I, I attest that. You guys, you know, Lorenz manages you guys. Uh, you guys have great management. And there's a lot of bands out there that have no management. And you, you guys you guys have really great management. Um, I think and, we, we lucked out our whole career with getting people that the smartest thing we ever did was have people who love you, but they happen to be in the industry too, you know? And we lucked out a lot with that from, uh, from day one when we started getting a manager, you know? Like the first, I think, two years of the band, I did all the band stuff, and it was a mess. <laughs> the only thing I did right was I worked in a mail room. So whenever we had to mail out uh, packages, I would charge other <laughs> bands for it. My supervisor was like, yeah, just oh, yeah. Out the, you know, Pearl Jam. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> that so was so much fun working in that mail room because for a while it was me, Lou, and Toby from H2O. Wow. And it was just so much fun. Yeah. You know, it was like cool. total stupidity oh. all day. <laughs> so much crime. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you have to read the book. <laughs> hey, even, even better is when I work construction with Sick of It Al, Isaac, and Toby. Oh, my and God. <laughs> Toby hated working, okay? So what he would do is, like, they would make us do all the shitty jobs because we weren't part of the union. So they would they would give us the brooms. So Toby didn't want to work. So he would break his broom. They're like, oh, the broom broke. It can't work. So the guy would tape it up. Here, use this one. He'd break it again, like two seconds later. And the fucking guy was like, how the fuck do these brooms keep breaking? And that was Toby's concept to get out of work, but still get paid. Break the broom. Break and Isaac would be broom. sleeping somewhere because he was out all night. You know, um, I got to tell you guys something. I uh, recently, you know, I've been going through a lot of my old archives and old VHSs and, and transferring footage, you know, from my Patreon page, uh, from you know, from my patrons. And I transferred a couple of um, VHSs, and one of them, you guys were on it. It was this show that I did for my film company at the Cat Club in like 1983. It was like sick of it all, War Zone. Um, on and on. I don't know if you remember this, but you guys played. You guys played a full set. It was 1983. It was at the Cat Club. It was like sick of it all. War Zone, psychic orgy, um, 25, 25 wow. to life, and this and that. So I'm going through this stuff the other day, and at the end of the sick of it all set, you hand the mic to Toby, 
Isaac takes the yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the original and, H2O. Yo, I have that footage. My love is real. We were, we were, we were, we were, we were trying to get shit going for him. Yo, you did. And we you would do that on every tour. We would have Toby come out at the yeah. end. And, and that's where he came up with the whole concept. He made it up on the spot. He goes, yeah, I got my band's H2O because water's the purest thing you can put in your body. And it was all just off the top of your head as a joke. And I remember doing it in L.A. when we, we did two nights at the Whiskey. And the, what's the name? Brett from Epitaph goes, this guy needs to be signed. And I go, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he impressed Epitaph. <laughs> yeah. And, and so I, I have to tr – I, I transferred it. I have to uh, – I got I to gotta put that footage together. But I was like, what's this? And, I, and like, you know, he's playing the ball. Yeah, there you go. And Isaac, Isaac is playing bass. I yeah, think yeah. Paul played bass at one point. It, it's whoever, whichever road he wasn't busy would pick up the bass and just ride the E a lot. That's all. We <laughs> so, so you guys, uh, you guys remember this day? Oh, yeah. The Roll Less Travel video shoot. Yeah. So oh, yeah. um, that was a long day. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it sure was. It, <laughs> that was, it was fun. <laughs> it was a long day, and um, it was great. It, it, the video, the video was the video was great. It turned it turned out great. It was it was fun working with you guys. And um, recently, I uh, now, now I I came across we we did this video on one take, right? It, everything was one take, and we did it. Yep. Uh, we did it 11 times. 11 times, yeah. yeah. And the, t the, the <laughs> take that everybody, the, the, the take that we decided on was take number eight, right? Yeah. And recently, I came across all the other takes. So what we're going to do, I talked to your manager, and I assume he talked to you, because, uh, yeah. you know, to make sure it was okay. But, uh, you know, I looked, at, I looked at the other takes, and... Uh, I, you know, to, you know, to play one and I looked at take 11 and we looked exhausted, bro. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. We were yeah, like, yeah. you could just tell. Rough. You know, you're you're all like, yeah. <laughs> <Let's do laughs> one more. There, there was another take that we all liked, but for some reason Craig didn't like it. And so we had to use uh yeah, yeah. Let's take, there, there Let's was take one that I liked better. You ready? Let's take a look at it. Here we go. Oh boy. <laughs> Here we go. This is a, let me say, this is a, this is a never before seen alternate take of Sick of It All, The Road Less Traveled. Let me dig that sucker out. Didn't know that was coming up. Yeah, man. That's all right. That's what we're what doing. What number is this? What take was this? Good question. Good question. I, I looked at 11, 11 was brutal. We looked too beat up. Five, <laughs> five was too premature. This is actually take number nine. And this is the one, this is the one that Craig didn't like. I'm not real, I, I, I'm not real sure why. Doesn't make a lot of fucking sense. But uh, he, he was doing that thing with his lips. I right. remember. Well, he's like being like, watch oh, when he does break. the bass break. Watch when he does the bass break. Okay, here we go. That's that weird lip thing. <laughs> Oh, we're back. It was short. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what happened? That was the shortest take ever. Wait a second. Drew doesn't that's, the same, that's the same video. What the fuck? That sucks. <laughs> Hold on. That, down but not out. Hold on. Promises, promises. Yeah, down but not out. Hold on. We are we can recover. I just, I'm going to double check. Let's go. <laughs> wow, did I, I really fucked that one up. All right, here we go. <laughs> Take number nine. Take number nine. What kind of cheap-ass operation is this? 
Yeah, one man. Yeah, I, I got to go over. I got to go do nothing. Come on. <laughs> I got to get back to my COVID nothing. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know you don't. You know, like, hi. Hey, Lucy. Lucy wants to say hi. Delirious as the show went. <laughs> Yeah, After this, come back on. All right. I'm showing a, a video. Oh, take these things out. They keep We'll be back live in a few seconds. See, that's also what happened. It's like <laughs> oh, oh, well, it's oh, we have a new guest. <laughs> hey, what happened? I guess I don't it's know. Like Lucy. Pete grew an extra head. <laughs> she she said I'm taking too long. She's like, what what come on, we have to go in the pool. <laughs> Hi Lucy. Hey Lucy. Uh-oh. See you later, Church. All right. I tried. We can make those. I tried and failed. I'm sorry. I failed. I can just promote it on the page to have people come and watch the uh, exclusive. Yeah, that's fun. I'm sorry. On the patron. Yeah, right. I'm yeah, if sorry, you got it, anyway, kid. Let, let, let's, let's keep it moving. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> I'll tag you guys in it. I, I, the internet, the internet is, is, uh, has fuzzed me. I'm not sure why it happens. I got thunderstorms oh. over here right now. You got oh, what? Here too. Thunderstorms rolling. Yeah, yeah well, it's happening here. Here too. in Florida, they're they're headed here now. Just remember, if we get zapped out, thank you for coming on the show. It's been <laughs> a lot of fun. <laughs> hey, look, here's Pete and Dee Snyder. What is that? Hell yeah, it's Pete what? and Dee Snyder. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's all right. <laughs> well, if you want to know the story. Obviously, yeah, you have to buy the book. You should buy the book, but there's a great uh, Twisted Sister <laughs> meets Sick of It All story in the book. Ah, uh, Twisted. That was a very fun night. Hey, before we um, before we take uh, some questions, I want to say, oh. if anybody has any questions, now's the time to post them. Uh, I just want to ask you about this this one this one photo and this one tour, Lou. Uh, Tell us a little bit about this tour. Oh, that was the uh, oh shit, the Bad Brains tour, uh, Quickness tour. Quickness, yeah, and it was uh, Bad Brains <laughs> leeway and sick of it all. We joined the tour in Salt Lake City. That was amazing. That yeah. was that's the last night in L.A. I think was the last show. We was met. That, uh, what year was that? Was that 80, 89? 89, 89, Yeah, nineteen eighty nine. Yeah, HR was HR still had a little a little pop in his step back. Oh my god! Right? Like, oh, that's first night, amazing. We did, we did two nights in Salt Lake City. And the first night, I could I can never forget that night. It was great. Really, Why? Why? watching him play and then him the backflips, boom! Oh, oh, amazing. fucking amazing. crazy, that's crazy. Awesome. We uh, we danced to the Bad Brains every single night of that yep. tour. Wow. We played the show. Cool. You know, hang out with Leeway, rock out to them, and then us and pretty much all of Leeway would go into the crowd too. Yeah. And then we would just dance all night. That's awesome. Screaming along. It was great. Well, good shit. <laughs> hey, let's uh yeah. let's take a couple of questions. You know, also, uh it's Sid the Kid's birthday, and we gotta bring him on. Uh. Or I'll never hear the end of it. Uh, we'll bring Rap Bones on for a minute too. He turned. Uh, up. My my connection's getting lost. <laughs> uh, there's some kind of interference. I gotta go. There's uh, something going on. What's happening? Uh, <laughs> I I can't hear you. I can't hear you. <laughs> just everybody, just start mouthing, but don't make any noise. <laughs> Let's take a couple questions here. Sure. Um, couple things 
Greetings from Argentina, amigos. Hey. You know, Hola. They hey, we're, and, we're sorry they we had to cancel that tour. <laughs> uh, here's one from Jay Seltzer. Question for both Lou and Pete. Who is the best bus driver from Queens? <laughs> Mary <laughs> McEnroe. Uh, oh, she was um, is this? I think his name is Dominic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? How about Pete? Do you still have the white SG? Well, supposedly it's in Craig's garage. Uh, so <laughs> there's a lot. I of haven't been there. Supposed to be in Craig's garage that you know right. he owned, but well, we yeah, we have we have these we have these sick of it all canoes. You know, that the band owns now because it, it sits in our space that the band pays for. So there are canoes now. <laughs> canoes. I don't have the guitar with me. I think it's in Queens somewhere. All right. You know, you like know, when, uh, just as a side note, when Jerry Garcia from the Grateful Dead died, his family took his guitars and the band turned around and said, wait a second. We, the band paid for those guitars. Oh, the band yeah. owns it was a big lawsuit because wow. the corporation Grateful Dead Productions paid for those guitars. They weren't his guitars. Wow. That's yeah, pretty yeah. rough, man. Well, you yeah. think the Grateful Dead would be well, like, I actually yeah. I actually paid for the the SG. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. And, 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 I paid for half of it and then my brother Steve paid for the rest. Listen, I set myself up for this. Less Grateful Dead, more sick of it all. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 saw, I saw this. Um, KG. You know, you know, Lou, this comes up. I have to bring it up. Oh, Jimmy Marino. What's up, Jimmy Marino? Jimmy! <laughs> you know, I, I'm only doing this because I, I, I out of fucking pressure. Bring the rat tail back. About 30 people have posted about the rat tail, Lou. That's like the greatest. I got a piece of it. I'll sell it to them. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I should have brought it. It's in the basement. I got. I could. I could run and get it later. <laughs> how long? How many years? Let the let the bidding that? begin. I don't remember. I had it, then I cut it off, then I grew it again, then it got ripped off, and that was the end of it. You don't see many people with that anymore, you know. No, I wonder why. You gotta bring it back. <laughs> Gee, I wonder um, why. It's like me you, you could back. actually bring it back. You have hair. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you're our, you're our only hope. Thing. Oh, look at that! Whoa, whoa. Yeah, that's, Co whoa. that's Kohler Brothers, you know. We got, Jeez. we're doing pretty good. Seriously, that's some crazy hair. Listen, you Kohler Brothers, you have the genetics. Me, me, and Howie are two Jewish guys from the <laughs> Upper West look Side. Look at the two of us. Look at the two of us up here. You know, and me and that. Howie. We, you know, we kill for hair like that. You know. Um, oh, great. I kill for any hair. <laughs> right. I'm looking for um, a, a question about uh, what, something about a fight at streets. Where is oh, that? that? Yeah. Is, it, that, is that in the book? Is that in the book? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah all in the book. You want to just touch on that real quick? Wasn't there – someone just said, wasn't there a big fight at Streets? You want to just touch touch on that we for a second? We played with Murphy's Law, right, Pete? It was us and Murphy's Law. I think Pete's frozen. Oh, there he is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. He was it. A whole bunch of A whole bunch of friends came up from the Here it the is. City. Here it is. Didn't one of you brothers get arrested in New Rochelle at Streets? Yeah, Pete did. It's all – Yeah, I did. I got arrested. Know, and that, that's where we had a benefit for him later and – that led to the straight ahead reunion, which is awesome. But yeah, that was a huge riot up at streets. But what, the locals hated the hardcore kids, even though they were. Oh, it was one of those things, like the the the, the townies versus the the, the locals versus. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And and the and the only people who got arrested were were all of us guys from the city or from Queens. Nobody course. from uh, New Rochelle got. And there was a uh, what didn't like I have like a knife. He had no shirt on. He had a knife shoved down his pants, and the cop was like, "Hey, just get out of here! Get out of here!" Kid. Go home. But they were yeah. arresting us. Right. Yeah. Streets. And what, were, and what song did that inspire? Shit happens. <laughs> then yeah. yeah, it was the uh, basis for injustice. That's what inspired injustice system. Is that right? That's yeah. That riot. You can read yeah. the details in the book. <laughs> Michael, Michael Duff says, "Craziest riot I ever saw." 
I don't know. There was a couple of them. You should have been in Arizona. There was Arizona, <laughs> the Allentown. Uh, oh, Allentown. Uh, Allentown. Allentown. Yeah, Allentown. Yeah, Allentown. The, the, the Sepultura tour we did started with a riot in Allentown and ended with a riot in uh, Seattle. It was awesome. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's nice. That's, good old bookends, you know? Yeah. Uh, here, here's one from our friend Chucky Brown, uh, who sings for Crazy Eddie. Speak on rapper KRS-One from Boogie Down Productions getting on the intro for the track Clobberin' Time. Oh, he's a he's a good guy. You know, we just met him through uh, – I'll give you the, the cut-down version. We met him through uh, a friend of ours who was working at a studio, and, and he couldn't believe that punk kids liked his – or hardcore kids liked his music – and we went down and met him, just talked to him, and then uh, we asked him to do it, and he said yes. That's how cool he was. And we touch base with him every few years, more like every few decades yeah. now, you know, but uh, he's always down. Like when we did the 20th anniversary, we asked him to redo the intro, and he was like, sure. We asked him, what do you want? And he goes, send me three triple extra large shirts. And that was it. <laughs> Good guy. That's a big guy. I, I, I saw him <laughs> perform guy. recently. Uh, and he, he throws out tennis balls. Now, like that is signs. I have one of them around here. Yeah. He brought a tennis ball, came right to me. <laughs> that's, that's his thing. Like at the end of the show, he comes out and he like, he has like, you know, KRS one. He like pre signs all these tennis balls. That's awesome. This yeah. way, you know, it's not like, you know, nobody can get hurt, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, here's a question from what is it with the Crazy Eddie guys and the fucking questions? When you started the band, did you ever think you'd be here almost four decades later? Nah, not at all. Not we, at all. We didn't. We didn't think that, and we didn't plan that. But we just never stopped moving. You know what yeah. I mean? We just yeah. we just keep going. It's not like, all right, <laughs> we're gonna play CBs, and after CBs, we're gonna do this. This. It just kept going, which is yeah. great. I mean, it, back then you didn't care because you didn't. What'd you have to do? Pay your rent, and that was it. Now, now we have more responsibilities, but you know. I mean, that's why we keep going. You know, the music is the most important part. Absolutely. Uh, we want to shout out our friend Craig Silverman, who's checking in. Oh, Good yeah. Fellow, Ghost Color Brothers. Craig Silverman from Agnostic Front, formerly of Slapshot. Craig, you got to come on the show one of these days, man. Yeah, you got to have him on. He's got stories galore. It's okay, Craig. You can, go <laughs> and you can come on the show. <laughs> uh, here we go. Here, here's a good question. I, I like this one. What were your plan B jobs if sick of it all never worked out? <laughs> uh, Pete, you go no, first. No, no plan at all. <laughs> no plan. <laughs> Lou? Exact same thing. I had no plan. My, my joke plan was people would ask, what are you going to do if the band doesn't, you know, the band ends? I'll be a janitor. <laughs> Janitors used to make good money. I don't know about nowadays, but. Right. You're the yeah, right see, but now we're too old to get jobs like that. We're, we're, we should be retired. So they ain't going to hire you. There you go. But you guys both went to school for like graphic design and stuff. You know, like you, you did yeah. have another thing. Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? You, yeah. yeah. have to, you got to brush up because everything's computers now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I, I went to school. I got like a uh, whatever in graphic arts, a degree or whatever. And then everything turns to computers. So whatever I've learned doesn't mean anything so my daughter can do better graphic arts on her on the my phone than i can do anyway <laughs> goes, oh, why are you drawing that i got an app right here yeah i know i know it's yeah. crazy right same thing it's like what are you doing pow kid does exactly it's like layering four different photos on top of each other and i'm like well, how do you do i can't even get oh, one here you go ernie will <laughs> hire you guys yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um, here is, uh, as janitors, he'll hire right. us. <laughs> Mike Duff says, somebody tell me what the song shut me out is about. It was just about, you know, uh, exactly what it says being shut out. It wasn't written about a specific thing. Like some people can be, was that about, you know, the straight edge crews shutting out these? Uh, no, it was just, a, it was just about people getting along. It was like incidents of seeing, you know, a struggling group and you're trying to help them. And then they're like, you know, they don't want your help or whatever. I wrote it when I was like 17. What the hell do I know? <laughs> those, those, those ones, those teenage songs resonate, resonate the most, don't they? Yeah. 
Uh, hey, hey, Howie, this is sort of directed at you. Uh, and any any uh, plans to do an audio version of the book? Yes, there will be an audio version of the book um, because it's a little new for you know the audio um, book publisher. We are trying to we're basically fighting so that the guys can read their book because I think it'll be so much better for everybody. Um, and you know, they're like, Hey, well, there's these professional readers, you know, and it's like, it's a little on the generic side, to be honest with you. Um, <clears throat> so we're going a little bit back and forth, but I think we are solving it and, you know, going to work with uh, Jerry Farley to help uh, the guys do the book and he'll sort of quarterback it from, uh, from Staten Island. Yeah. I guess we that kind of makes cool. sense. We kind of want to hear the Kohler brothers' voice through in the Sick of It All book, right? Well, that's what I'm saying. Radio guy. <laughs> it's it's funny too because the uh, like I showed that stick figure before. Like when we were talking for the book, and we talked at least twenty times for about two hours each time. So that's forty hours that we were on the phone together, and then we did a couple in person also. But I was like, man, I just want people to hear you guys. Say yeah. that stuff, you know, because the, the the queensness of it all, and you know, and just the you know the the personality of it. So, you know, one of the things we were like, man, I wish you could see this. Like, I want I want people to see them or hear them saying it. So we were like, well, let's add some stick figures and like shit like that, so that people <laughs> will get like the idea of especially the humor, because you know. Like people like, oh, sick of it all, the tough guy thing. And it's like, that's ridiculous. Like it's, there's funny shit going on all the time. And we had to make sure that the book was, funny, <laughs> you know, so we had to come up with these things, yeah. like to make sure that the personality comes through. So the stick figures was one of the ways. So I can't imagine the Pete and Lou audio book without them reading it. We yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, and, uh, one of the things I love about you guys is you have a fucking sense of humor. And that, that is, I think that it's just an endearing quality to you two and to the band. And Jenna, I think you two, I think you two mostly. But uh, oh, those two guys are funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, those guys are funny. Yeah. At yeah. a different level. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> uh Cannon, do you remember your time touring with the business? Rest in peace, Mickey Fitz, one of my favorite bands. Oh, yeah. We had a great time. The business was, uh, that was in the. That's over in Europe. It was like, we did some in Europe, but no, we did a, we did a lot of shows in Europe, but we, they joined on, was it for more than one show? We were touring. We, it was us, Corn, and Orange Nine Millimeter. We did a tour together. Yeah. yeah. A Corn out. Their manager wanted them to tour with a real live band. So we took Corn out, and then they left the last two shows because they got on like either Marilyn Manson or something like that. And the business took their place. Oh, wow. That was pretty cool. That was our first shows with the business. Yeah. There you go. They were great. Uh, they were a lot of fun. They were, we were there, like, when they doing the, the huge comeback in America or, you know, whatever. And then uh, when they touring Europe and Mickey was uh, going to struggle with alcohol. And then when he came back super clean, it was great. Steve, Steve from the business, both Steve, but Steve, the guitar player, uh, really helped us out a lot too. You know, he's he was a great guy. It's still a good guy. Hey, uh, hey, Pete. Uh, just real quick, uh, what made you switch from Mesa Boogie to PV? Uh, it was actually cheaper, and I lost my Mesa Boogie endorsement. <laughs> and hey. we were actually we were actually on tour somewhere, and we went into uh, a music store, and I brought my guitar in, and if I plugged in. And it sounded great, straight guitar, straight into the head. And it was the uh, 5150. So a 5150 with my EMG 81 pickup. Yeah. You can't beat it. And now PV, you know, endorses me and gives me stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. And, and <laughs> I survive. Hey, yeah. that's that. <laughs> hey, man. Um, you know, I was, I was thinking about this actually uh, when I was uh, doing some – prep for the show and uh, about, you know, my relationship with my brother, um, you know, whom I love very much, but I couldn't, you know, I work with him, you know, we're directing a film together right now and, and we've worked together in the past, but geez, man, I couldn't imagine like, you know, being tethered to being shackled to him in a band. I mean, has there ever, and this is what I was thinking 
the, the other day. Is there ever, was there ever a point, is there ever moments where you're like, yo, fuck that guy. <laughs> I'm out of here. Is that, is that, uh, have you guys, or have you guys always pretty much gotten along and sort of have this underlying, you don't go there ever? Yeah, we get along. I think it was because we have two older brothers and it split that way. It was like Steve and Matt hung out and then it was me and Pete, you know, there was a little crossover there, but you know, not much. It was mostly me and Pete together. <laughs> wow. Does that make, does that make, does that make sense, Pete? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Well, I mean, we, we argue, but actually all four of us argue the band, but it's like, this is us. This is this, and nothing's going to make it stop, you know? So things are always patched up and, you know, yeah. compromises are made. I, I respect. See, with I, me, th these guys always say, oh, Pete never says anything. He never, he never, you know, he never chimes in. I chime in with my idea and my comment, and then that's it. Too many cooks every once in a while, you know what I'm saying? Because these guys... If you were on one of our uh, band threads, text messages, <laughs> these fucking things go on for fucking hours, you know? And it's like Armand's text messages would be like fucking six paragraphs long. And then Craig will send one too. And it's like, I write, okay, yeah, I like that t-shirt. Cool. Done. And then this guy's like, well, I like the hue of yellow. More of a burnt <laughs> umber. I was like, well, what do you mean burnt umber? But I think we should use this color. Like it's like, who gives a fuck? Then for the you next ain't four, wearing a fucking shirt. The next four hours is Armand and Craig making fun of each other on the thread. Oh yeah, <laughs> that goes on for hours. Listen, I, I the other I, day, the other day on the WhatsApp thread, there's like fucking fifty pictures of slices of pizza. That's what it was. <laughs> It's like, oh, is is this something important? No. You know, that just that fucking... shit. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yo, what the fuck? Yo, he took me, yo, I was never in Amores until last year. And he's like, we were going, we were going to see the fight the, the fights. We we're going to, to the last heavyweight fight. We go to the fights once in a while, me and Craig. And he's like, meet me in Amores. You've never been there. So we go and he gives me the grand tour. And the whole, like, the whole thing, the whole grand tour, the whole thing. And, and, and you know, it's like, yeah, man, it's it's good. It's good New York pizza, bro. It's not like we're eating at the fucking yeah. five seasons, bro. You know? I love that. He, he, just because you don't agree that it's the best pizza in the world, you don't know anything about pizza. The funny oh, thing you is. You don't know anything about pizza. I was eating at Amore's in 88. Way before this kid <laughs> and his cronies, oh, Maury's greatest pizza in the world. <laughs> it's good, clean pizza. That's all. Here's our friend, our friend Joanna, uh, chiming in the grand tour. You walk in, and that's it. Exactly. <laughs> no, it's really good pizza, but so is Pizza Garden and Flushing. Same exact pizza. I don't care what they tell you. I mean, what do you want me to say? Yo, yo, it's amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. And when Craig walks into Amore's, the guy behind the fucking counter is like, Jesus Christ, this fucking guy's here again? What the fuck? <laughs> with, his, with his degenerate friends? <laughs> he also eats like an obscene amount of pizza. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus like, uh -oh. Christ. Like four slices minimum. <laughs> How does this that? turn into attacking Craig? This is like a usual thing. I blame This is just like one of our threads. Always forcing pizza down the right <laughs> throat. This is, good. this is good because you know he's not yes, fucking he's going to know. It's pizza garden. You know he's not No, lying. no, no way. I used to live five blocks in pizza garden. Oh, wait. Where's Craig, pizza garden? Craig yeah, needs yeah. to know, though. One, one clarification. Craig needs to know that they were very sensitive about saying anything really shitty about him. That they yeah. they wanted to make sure Don't that make him think he, I'm his friend. He was not at his expense. <laughs> they were laughing with him and they're laughing. <laughs> you know what? Him we're saving him. all that for the actual sick of it all book. Yeah. yeah right. Then you can all just <laughs> you know what? Like some kind of monster, but idea. Actually funny. Is someone just put up uh, there needs to be a pizza show. So you guys will have you guys will have to because now everyone's <laughs> chiming in with, with this fucking pizza shit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I told Armand and Craig to do that years ago, but they, I said, get the guys in wisdom because they're always all comparing pizza. But then they were all like, oh, they don't know pizza. And then those guys, they don't know pizza. <laughs> yeah, he can't get a signal in the woods with Craig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's such total bullshit. That is, 
That he doesn't want to lie. answer you. That's what that's it is. He gets, he gets out of doing work. Oh, I got no signal. Holy shit. Um, you I know, want to read Craig's parts in his voice. Uh, there was right. a time when we had yeah, to see, see, that's what we're going to do. In the audio book, you know, we're going to do our own parts. But then we're going to mimic Craig and Armand and anyone else who's in the book. And we're going to make up our own <laughs> voices for it. I hope nobody's in a rush. Like, hey, kid. Show's going to be going on for a little while longer. Yeah. So, <laughs> I want to loosen up your laces and, uh, you know, right. I got to go to work. Yeah. What? Hey, uh, hey, question for Pete. Uh, what do you, what do you attribute your explosive energy on stage? Yoga stretching? Uh, well, I take physical fitness very seriously. Okay. Uh, I work out two hours every morning. And then sometimes some more during the day. Uh, I do not watch what I eat at all because I got to enjoy something. You know, I don't drink, I don't smoke. So that's what I do. But I stretch martial arts, jujitsu, all that crapola. As long as it keeps me ready for playing. Okay. That's what it's about. Wow. You work out two hours a day in the morning? Yeah, I go. I actually go to the gym at three thirty a.m. What do you think of that crazy shit? You? Is that right? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> I got my own key to the gym. I go there and there's nobody there, so it's like your own place. I put on my own music. I clean the whole place with alcohol. That's what wow. I do. <laughs> hey, listen, it it shows because you guys put on an explosive live show. It's 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 incredible. All you guys are in great shape. You know, it's like. You know, it gets, you know, you go see some of these hardcore You go see some of these hardcore bands and it's like, you know, the it's like, you know, the the four like overweight guys like standing <laughs> in one place playing. That's not to do it all, that's for sure, you know. Here's uh yeah, here's, yeah. here's a nice uh from Ben H. Hey Ben I, H. I invited Sick of It All to South Korea in 2012. Unforgettable memory. Still remember Pete and I talking about Korean zombies. An MMA. The Korean zombie. Yeah. I was going to wear my Korean zombie shirt today, but I wore it yesterday. Did you he guys make a comeback? Is he still fighting? Oh. Oh, I got the fucking shot. You yeah, remind he fights every me once in a while. Fucking... Yo, you just reminded me of the great picture. You ready? Oh. Okay. Oh, boy. This is Pete. We talked about this before. Not only is it Sid the Kid's birthday today, but who else's birthday is it? Bon Scott. Boom. What's up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's all of us at us and AF at, the, at uh, Bon Scott's uh, grave. At, at Bon Scott's grave. Yeah. We did a New York United tour of Australia and one show in New Zealand. Uh, I, don't remember, I don't remember what year, but uh, it was us and AF. It was awesome. And we all went to Bon Scott's grave. And we all, you know, you pay tribute to him. <clears throat> That's awesome. Yeah, we all left our little we guitar picks. We put them on the you know, yeah, it's funny. Stone, stone, and and so. People leave their guitar picked on his uh, headstone. That's it. Bon Scott is, uh, he, I, I just, he's one of my favorites, man. One of the all time great front men, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah look, look so, so, somebody just said, wait, wait. <laughs> Armand looks like the dad that drove you there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I was just transitioning to I'm a suburban dad. Oh. Uh, <laughs> far, wearing, far cry he, from doing dust in the Bronx, I guess. <laughs> is he wearing Crocs in that picture? Does he have a pair of Crocs on? Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Um, I don't care how comfortable Crocs are. I am never wearing those fucking. No. <laughs> That's you. You might as well just. No, say, I was hey, flying. I was. <laughs> hey, I was uh, flying to a, a festival up in Canada, and Phil Ensemble was in front of me, and he was wearing a pair of black Crocs, and I was like, Phil. What the fuck? That's like giving That's, up. That can It's like when death metal bands wore sweatpants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's. I'm sort of disappointed to hear that Phil was wearing Crocs. You know. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. Um, this is this one. This one's for you, uh, Pete. What's the longest flight you guys have been on? Oh. Like 14, All right. 14 so hours. to save money, we come up. 
Well, see, I live in Daytona, so my flights are way more than anybody else, okay? I think we were flying to Australia or something. So to save money, this was cheaper. I flew from Daytona to Atlanta, somewhere in Germany, to Dubai, to Australia. What do you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> wow. That shit was brutal. Insane. I don't even know yeah. how long it took. That's it's crazy. Insane. Yeah, that's such a... that's yeah, we went the opposite way to get there. That's got to be more than 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. It was insane. And with layovers everywhere. Insane. <laughs> Hey, this listen. The, the 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 winning comments are coming in on the Phil Anselmo Crocs. Vulgar display of Crocs. <laughs> and, and also, does he have Croc Martins? No. <laughs> is that is that real, Drew? This like there's memes going around of Croc Martins. I hope it's like, not real. Like a collabo between Crocs and Doc Martins. Listen, Still not that's cool. awful. Yeah. Crocs are so weird, they are cool. Psych. Yeah. <laughs> Crocs will never be. Yeah. Not. Not, not for sure. Uh, hey, uh, let's, uh, let's wind it down a little bit. Let me, let me bring on um, – give me one second here, and we'll bring on our regular guys, and we'll have a few more laughs. Hey, regular guy. And then we'll head out the door. Uh, it's the, the regular York guy, Chronicles. look. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Sponsored by Fryette Amplification, New York Hardcore Comics, and Organic Grill. Uh, you're watching our very special show today uh, with the Kohler Brothers and their co-author, Howie Abrams. The new book is The Blood and the Sweat, The Story of Sick of It All's Kohler Brothers. It's out August 4th. You can, 4th. You can pre-order it now at Amazon.com, BarnesandNobles.com, Generation Records, Big Dark. BigCard.com and our friends in Berlin. No sleep till Berlin at Cortex. Uh, taking some questions. We're going to bring in a couple of our people. I just want to remind everybody that this Sunday we have Matt Wildcard Henderson on the show, and that should be a lot of fun. Just announced a few other shows. We got the Planet of the Apes show coming up. July 19th, we got Derek Green. The 22nd, we have Sammy Siegler. And July 26th, the Worldwide Hardcore Firing Squad. Also, if you can, please check out the Patreon page. Uh, here's the Patreon banner. Uh, there it is. Check it out. See what's going on. I'm releasing all kinds of unreleased, never-before-seen stuff that you want to see. Uh, support the show. Support the motherfucking show, for Christ's sakes. Um, that said, hope you're well. Be Yo, also, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world right now. Um doesn't seem to be getting a lot better. So I hope the show is giving a little bit of an uh, alternative to kind of all the bad shit that's on TV and all the bumminess. So I appreciate everybody around the world chiming in. The show's been a success, and it's a success because of you, not because of me. I'm just the conduit for this. I'm just the conduit for this bullshit. All right. Um, let me let, let me clear the banners. It's Sid the Kid's birthday. So let's see if he's out. Sid, are you out there? There he is. Oh, Drew. The kid. What What's up? up? Oh, Jesus. All right. Uh, hey, I'm the only 45 that matters today, okay? <laughs> yeah. Listen, Sid, you're on the clock, man. So don't Where's fucking take? Don't take over the show, fuckwad. Hey, there's, there's, I'm not taking over the show. It's this guy's show, me. It's your, your guy's show. <laughs> Uh, by the way, guys, I actually did pre-order that today from Generation, so I can't wait to uh, get a look at that book when I get my hands on it, too. There you oh, go. Cool. Right. Thank you. Uh, uh, Sid, I was going to make a joke know. that you could read, but I didn't. Hey, <laughs> we want to treat. We want to wish you a happy birthday, Sid. Thank you very much, guys. And yeah, happy Lou. birthday, Sid. Happy birthday. Lou, Pete. Right. You share your birthday with Bon Scott. Yeah, yeah I, you know that? Your birthday's the same as that. You would have thunk it. Who, who knew? Uh, Pete That's Lewis, where cool went to Bon Scott. We really wanted to thank you guys for all the years of music. It's one of the reasons why I'm, I still do what I'm doing today, playing in bands and just supporting the scene. Like It's been 32 years now, at least, that I've been watching you guys play, and it's been worth every freaking day to oh, see you guys play live. Thanks, man. So you guys have inspired... 
guys have inspired Thank Sid you the very Kid. much, my man. No, it's all our fault. <laughs> Would you? <laughs> it was it's everybody. Who do you got? Shirt, Sid. Let's see your shirt, Sid. Here's your moment. Oh, Let's yeah. I know, I know Frank's watching it. That's why. Can't say as much for how the match was today, but <laughs> next, next week's another match. That's all I can really say. I like how you pulled yourself together for your birthday, bro. I like you got in the right, you got in the right angle, the right corner. You're like, good. You're looking well, good, bro. Exactly, well, my room isn't exactly that big. I have a corner. I don't have corners, just a corner. <laughs> All right. <So> <laughs> hey, oh. All right, Sid. You, you 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 hang in there with this. We we want to bring another we want to bring uh, another uh Friend of ours on the show who wants to say hi to you guys. What's up, Rat Bones? Hey, there he is. What's up, guys? What's up? What's going on? <laughs> oh, you, you look, man? Oh, you look diesel. Cool. What's going on? I'm actually in the studio today. Nice. I'm laying down vocals uh, for a track called We Got Tonight to Fight with Kings Never Die. I'm doing a little of vocals with them. So I did bring some toys, though, so you got to let me run my segment. And I got one question to ask the guys. No. No, don't get into a oh, hole. I got great toys. No, don't fuck you, Joe. Hold on. Look. Oh, bro. I, I got the best toy for these guys. <laughs> All right. Look at that band, boy. What is it? Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Don't front. <laughs> I want That's that cool. Like that. <laughs> I got the variant misfit. I got a pink one. <laughs> yeah. I got the green one now. Nice. And then I got the Iron Maiden <laughs> power slave. But wait, for Pete, for Pete, I got this for Pete. Yeah. We got the one I saw coming for you, motherfucker. Cool. <laughs> Yo, I just want to say it's been real great watching you guys. It's been funny as shit. Uh, you know, Pete, we're uh, separated by three degrees of separation where uh, you guys wrote that Ironbound song, and then Tommy asked me to sing on it, and that was pretty cool. That was in the 90s. Yep. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. it was great that Bad Brains tour, too. We stole a car from Detroit and went to see you guys in Chicago. <laughs> I mean, no, that was the heyday. And congratulations on your second book there, Howie, or your third or fourth book. You're banging them out. Good for you, brother. Not, but thank you, my man. <laughs> well, it's great seeing all you guys. Did you did you bring I got those more toys? toys? I mean, you want to look to the studio, Rat Bones? Did you what bring happened? Those, did you bring those toys to the studio for the show? Yeah, but I was recording and I forgot to do the segment, so I had to knock it out. Of course, okay. I brought them. It's okay. I have a job to do, Drew. A job to do. Listen, bro. I know my show. I know my show's just when you got to do when you have nothing else to do. But I'm glad. The, I'm glad the you, show's I'm, been hilarious. <laughs> Poor Craig. He's got to put up with these two. <laughs> you forgot. All right, listen. Let's get, you gotta get hey, can, I, on here. can I tell Lou one thing? Can I tell Lou one thing? Well, well, next time, hey, man, next time, you gotta uh, get the hand on. It's real. Then I'm getting the fuck out because I got shit to do too. But Lou, I just want you to know uh, a dear friend of mine that passed. His name was Psycho Sam. He was a real heavy set dude. But we grew up. We came up as punks together back in the day, and he was like a really cool dude. But he had a little problem. He had a chippy. Well, one show, he was at a sick of it all show, and he was all up against the wall. And he was nodding hard. And and you looked over, and you were like, hey, everybody, look at this guy. He's fucked up. Like, and stopped the whole show and, like, embarrassed. And he was like, but the funniest part is, like, he always talked about that. It was like, yo, man, Rap Owens, yo, who noticed me, man? He, like. Stopped the whole show and said, like, yo, look at me. So, like, he was always proud of that moment. Like, yo, even though we partied, you too, Pete, you know the deal, man. You helped me out when times were tough, man, and, like, real family shit, not, like, all this other sideshow shit. So I love you guys, man. It's great seeing you. Of course you're successful. Like, you're the motorhead of uh, hardcore. Oh, that's if, if AF is the Sabbath and Mad Bull is the Iron Maiden, you guys Thank are definitely you. the motorhead. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, and that would make Murphy's Law the Motley Crew. <laughs> <laughs> I got it now. All right, rap ah. we'll, we'll see you soon, man. All right, good, guys. Man. See, see you. Right. Out. Listen, oh. you asked for it, you got it. New York hardcore legends and rap Take it easy. Listen, oh, there's room God. for everyone on the boat here, man. We love everyone on this show. 
It, it, we, we love everybody. Let's bring on uh, Hardcore Shutterbug, Stephen Messina. What's up, Stephen? Hey, what's up? What's up? On Where are you? On the train? Heading home, yeah. Where are you? In Woodside? No, I'm yeah. already <laughs> towards Hicksville now already. Wow. Hicksville. But uh, I, wanted to, uh, I wanted to say, uh, I, 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 I laid it in the comments earlier, but I wanted to thank Pete. Uh, the, the day of the last hardcore matinee day at CB's, which is still probably my favorite hardcore show of all time. I was with a guy named Machine Gun Mike, who's a good friend of mine, who left the railroad to become a mercenary. And uh, he had a bum leg at the time, and we got to CB's. There was a line around the block. So I said, let's take a walk around the back and see what's going on. And right as we walked around the back, Pete was coming out the back door, and he saw, he saw Mike limp, and he said, come on, guys. And he led us in the back door. And Mike got like the perfect spot, and I got a perfect spot. And it was still the most epic night and uh, that I wish would have been released on video because I saw cameras filming everywhere. And I'll never forget that you let us in the back door at the, my ultimate hardcore show that I will take with me to my grave. Sick of it all, Gnostic oh. Front, Murphy's Law, Harley. It was just mad ball. It was insane. It was just the most insane day. Right oh, on. Great day. Great show. So, and there was there was multiple video cameras. It looked like they had a whole crew there. You can see and both online. I I thought you guys were filming it professionally, and I, I wish uh, I wish it would have come out. We it never did stuff like that. Uh, yeah. That was just uh, what a show that was, you know. All right, and, and you've never disappointed. We don't since, do anything so. professionally. <laughs> <laughs> but but this is great. I'm looking forward to the book. It should uh, hopefully be in my mailbox soon. And uh, you know, can't thank you guys enough. And thank you. I've already had uh, three different ex girlfriends steal sick of it all hoodies from me, <laughs> and uh, that's why I keep buying them. So. Well, thanks to your ex-girlfriends. I mean, <laughs> thank you. Keep that rolling. All right. Yeah. So, keep, keep it moving. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you, well, guys. Thanks, see, see you later. Hey, Stephen. Hey, I, I have a good story about that show. Oh, let's Go see ahead. It. Go ahead, Pete. Oh, he's frozen. Ah. <laughs> All right. So, me nah. and May Lynn, we got to the show early. So the brothers were there. So we were at the club and we're like, the place is going to be closed down. So we go over to the stage. I was like, fuck this. I'm taking a piece of the stage with me. And we're sitting there. We're trying to break pieces of the, the stage off. And then the Gallo brothers had saws and hammers for some reason in their backpacks. So we cut all these pieces of the CV stage off. And we, you know, you know Mike got one. You know, we, we just gave them out. And I have one hanging on my wall at home. The actual stage. It's pretty oh, fucking cool. Awesome. <laughs> Steven, hey, Steven, we'll yes. talk to you later, buddy. You got it. See you guys. Happy Wait, birthday, Steve. Sid, happy oh. birthday, Sid. Stay Wait, out of trouble, Steve. right? I'll talk to you later. Happy you birthday. Right there. That's right. That's right. Happy birthday, fuckwad. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, listen. I give these guys a hard time. Boy, but, DJ uh, and hardcore. <laughs> I love those guys. They they, they make they make, this show, they make this show great. Uh, you, you know what? Funny somebody just somebody Tim just posted this. Does yours have mites too? Did you? Yeah, I think Mike Gallo or somebody tells a story about taking a piece of the CBGB stage home, and when they got home, they yeah. saw that it had bugs in it. <laughs> uh, I I remember I kept it. Like in a bag for a few years. There you so go. So they probably died. They got ex <laughs> they got asphyxiated. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Um, what what one last thing here? You know, um, now that now that everybody's done kissing your asses here. Yeah. You <laughs> but um, you know, uh, Lou and Pete, you know, like what Stephen was talking about. It reminded me of this photo uh, of you guys with somebody that, you know. I know inspired you guys and, and, and inspired me as well, you know, and. Oh yeah. This is one of my, this is a fucking great photo. I, I mean, uh, tell us a little bit about this, Lou. That was a summer 99 in Italy. We did a bunch of festivals with uh, 
the offspring and they had Joe Strummer with them. Uh, his, his, the, what was his, what was his band again? Mescaleros. Yeah. Mescaleros. Yeah. Mescaleros. And, uh, one of the roadies from the offspring said to him, you got to watch sick of it all. And he came and stood on stage. You figured he'd watch one song. No, he watched the whole set. When we came off, he was so happy and ecstatic. He was like, what you guys did to the crowd and blah, blah, blah. And luckily Pete was there and Pete goes, Hey, let's take a picture. <laughs> Cause I never think of stuff. Like that. <laughs> and he just whipped off his sunglasses. and gave that phone. <laughs> But it was cool. Cause it wasn't just that he also like, I have a newspaper from Toronto that he's in and he mentioned sick of it all. Like for the rest of the year, he mentioned us on MTV. He mentioned us where, you know, whenever he was talking about music and that, that was really cool of him. You know, that's Didn't awesome. you see, Lou, that like one of you felt like one of your greatest accomplishments was getting love from like Joe Strummer, but also getting it from like Tom Mariah? Yeah, yeah, that was that's true. That's that's exactly. Uh, somebody was doing an interview with me and this singer from Most P Precious Blood, and I said, "What is your greatest accomplishment?" <clears throat> and, you know, and he gave this long ass, weird, artsy speech, and I said. Uh, that Joe Strummer and Tom Araya like my band. And everybody's like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Hey, listen, man, I want to thank you guys uh, for coming on the show. We had, listen, we had a lot of laughs, man. Yeah, and that's really what it's about, you know? It was, it was, it was really, it was really great. I'm um, telling you, you got to have Armand and Craig on because those two will have you pissing your Yeah, brain. yeah. <laughs> That'd be like a five hour show of us just yelling at each other. <laughs> uh, Howie, let's start with you. Um, a, a parting shot, uh, parting shout out about the book. Uh, anybody you want to shout out, give any love to? Um, I mean, just as far as where you can get the book again, it's out August 4th, but if you get it from generation records in New York, uh, they're shipping them now, but Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Cortex in Germany, um, Revelation Records, and I, like I said, I think uh, New York Hardcore Comics, if they don't have it already, they're going to have it real soon. But just, uh, you know, want to say thank you to Pete and Lou for, for trusting me to help do this with them. I mean, wow. it was such a great experience, and, like, we've been actually doing work shit together since 1980, you know, eight, really. Wow. And, you know, it's a long yeah, fucking yeah. time, and it's like, you know, I just had this, like, cockamamie idea about the book, and you know, at first I think they're a little skeptical, but then we, we kind of eased into it and, and I'm just so glad that we did it. Right on. Yeah. Thanks. man. Thanks, Howie. We'll talk to you soon. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, Howie, thank you. Hey, Howie, you. Howie Abrams, man. What, what, always one of your, one of your great, great supporters through the yeah. year. Yeah. It's true. It's like <laughs> I said before, like the manager thing, you always got to have people that love your music and love, you know, know you as people. <laughs> And, and it's good to be a Queens native, like yeah. <laughs> exactly. It goes a long way. <laughs> um, they, um, Pete, uh, thanks. Uh, anybody you want to shout out on the way out? Uh, of course, my family. They're the reason for living, and Craig and Armand, because this is a team, team effort. You know. And the band has to keep rolling and we all are on the same page. And thanks to all the people who keep us going, the people who like our music. And we will be back to play shows. All right. I don't know how or when, but I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> I cannot wait to hear that intro come on and then get ready to play. I cannot wait for that. Fantastic. Lou, love you, bro. Uh, anybody wow. want to shout out, man? Well, thank you for having us again and always doing this, you know, keeping this going, keeping the uh, the A7 shows, all that. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, like Pete said, the band, Howie, uh, you know, all our fans and, our, you know, my family, everybody for sticking up and sticking by us. Cool. Well, thanks, you guys. Uh, be safe, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, man. All right. Take care. Well, there you go. The Kohler Brothers on the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Wow, what a great show. I had fun. I hope you had fun. 
I was really looking forward to this show. I, I really was, you know, it, it was, it was really a lot of fun. Um, thanks to everybody around the world, uh, for checking in and, uh, we'll, we'll see you soon. Do good things and good things will come to you.